before. This entire podcast is shit and does not compute. Not only was there a 4.0.4, error, nothing of worth or merit will be found here. Go away. And, uh, oh my god, we got numbers. Oh my god, it's error 404. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're having a 404 error at the Cleveland Moto podcast. Uh, and that's the smell of uh, liquor, 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 yeah. liquor, but get consent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm pulling a nick, and I'm actually you drinking. are nicking the I'm shit. I'm nicking out of, that. The, of this yeah. white claw mango flavored. So Ooh. here's to you, Nick. It, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just don't drink seven Wait, of them. Just don't heave on your and, and line, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll pinky it. How do they smell coming back? Uh, so to his left, Oscar, and to his left, Steve Sleepy, and to his left, Dan Kropke. And to his left, Johnny Mac. And to his left, Steve Hoffert. And your humble narrator, Phil Waters. We've covered that. Awesome. You know, I just realized when I used to fuck up Dan's name, it's because of how he says it. Oh. He says Crump Key. Oh. And I always thought there was a P in there when you say it. Like oh, you add oh, a crump, crump key. Crump key. I know, crump but, it, key. but somehow there's a P in there when I first. Oh, all right. But there's not. There's not all a right. silent P. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Daniel <laughs> Krampus. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I like to all say right. there's no P in crump key, but we all know that's not true. <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> uh, there's a P in Krampus, though. <laughs> exactly. Krampus. An officer Krump key. Krump key. And that's mm. the noise. I, yeah. That's my, my thing lately is I'm like, you know, Oh, I'll talk to a customer. I'll be like, yeah. And when Officer when Officer Krumpke pulls you over, and I mean to be saying Officer Krumpke, but I'm I'm just I'm throwing Dan right. under the bus for no apparent reason. So, <laughs> what does a uh, mm-hmm? deaf gynecologist do? Oh shit, we're doing a reverse. He okay. reads lips. Hey, oh, oh, oh wow, yeah. So wow. we're doing it in reverse, Oscar. Yeah. I didn't want yeah. to forget. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least you didn't print it out and actually read it on paper. So yeah. uh, that's great. Oh, Shots that's fired. Cool. Shots fired, indeed. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, the reason for today's podcast, one of the things we're going to talk about in episode four hundred four, four hundred four error, shit that doesn't work. Okay, oh, that never happens. Everything's shit, everything's fine. Shit that doesn't work. <laughs> Now, some John, of the shit we're going to talk about. I know John about, doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ouch. ouch. What are you so, talking about? I'm running the plant right now. Right, exactly. I'm on the clock, motherfucker. I'm on duty. So, oh, and Smith, <laughs> Smith duty. isn't here to defend his, his worthless penis. So uh, oh, man. Okay. So, first oh, thing John's that, a good worker. that we sorry. have to do is we have Correct to acknowledge, acknowledge gifts and salutations. Hey. So, in the middle of the table, you are going to so- find a ball. A bottle. A bottle. So uh, anybody can grab that bottle and read the bottle. That would be great. Help us out. There's this was brought to us on. by a podcast listener. So this is the Cleveland uh, Distillery, I'm assuming. It is the Christmas Spice Flavored Bourbon Whiskey. The city that gave rock its name. What's 86 that? proof. What's the picture on the... It's got the uh, terminal tower with a, a Christmas tree. And then some of the, then there's of the like jail, guitars. there's the jail, there's, right. there's the jail and, and a couple of guitars. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. Like, you want me to read the back at all oh. or no? We're good. You don't have to read the back. No, no I have an old, I have a couple year old bottle of that. Yeah. With, um, uh, um, the guardian. Oh, oh yeah. The guardian on it. Yep. I have, yep. uh, whatever's not in it is in, has been drunk. It's getting mm-hmm. in you. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, uh, it is, it is to bourbon. What, uh, Christmas fail, uh, is to beer. It is exactly what you think it is. It is bourbon that tastes like Christmas. <laughs> well done. And I have no problem with that. that like you fellatiated Santa? I, at wow. least an elf. You just got, <laughs> you got your way most of the way around an elf. Gotcha. If you licked an elf, <laughs> there you go. Um, so that's what that is. And if somebody else can reach up, uh, there's a card. Anyone who likes to read? So people who like to read can read the card. It's hard to read, but it is in English. I'll read it if you want. You want to read it? No, that's very fancy writing. It's very fancy writing, and it's very <laughs> fancy writing. I can still read and write cursive, just so you know. I, I can exactly. too. Okay. Dear Phil and the Cleveland Moto Podcast crew, Woo. Uh, although Phil was in Hawaii and uh, and timed podcast, oh, and timed podcast four hundred to air while he was away, don't think the quadricentennial was unnoticed. Ah. Four hundred of anything is good. But the entertaining and educational casts are exceptional and beyond other podcast content. Thank you. 
Thanks for keeping me in tune with what's going on in the two-wheeled world. Maybe the bourbon-loving fairy will visit us in mid-Ohio. Oh, yeah. Amen. So uh, this <laughs> is from Phil and Ralph Technow, oh, who okay. brought this in and gave us $50 towards the pizza fund. Wow. So wow. Nice. Thanks, Phil. The answer is, can you buy your way into our good graces? I guess I'll have to be nicer to him. <laughs> <laughs> I personally like Ralph. Look, nice everybody, guy. everybody, Thanks, Ralph. look, yeah. everyone has a break in period. Yep. <laughs> do not experience, do not ever expect Cleveland Moto to just be like, we love you unconditionally. Dogs do that. We do not do that. Yeah, we're do you know, do you know when I took a shining to our boy? Is at Mid Ohio yeah. when his scooter fell over, his brand yeah. new scooter. Yeah. And he picked it up and he was just like, oh, that happens. And that was it. We're just now getting used to Dan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's starting so, to grow on me. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> literally. But, but. Yeah, get a haircut. Getting hippie. Hippie. You're getting hippie. You're getting hippie. Thanks, Ralph. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. That was super sweet of you. And, yeah, the 400th podcast. To us, it didn't feel like a big deal because, huh. honestly, we do this. I put a, a beginning. I, mean, I know. I like it. <laughs> and there's so many uh, ones in there that you don't even know if it is the 400th podcast. <laughs> We've had our like point fair two, share point five, se- stealth 39. podcast. Point six. As I'm dropping the old ones, I'm trying to correct that. Gotcha. So as we're going through and putting the episodes in from the vault, I have been trying to line them up because we did not list them numerically. Oh. We listed them by date. And unfortunately, the date that we listed them on was sometimes the date they were dropped, which could have been three months after they were recorded. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ouch. So it was uh, like back in the day when you bought the vehicle, that's the date, the title. Right. <laughs> because in the winter, you had to chip the ice off the podcast in order to be able to post it. <laughs> Oscars 56 that's titled as a 58. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, so that's yeah. exactly, that is exactly how we're doing it. Okay. But, but it is titled, so that doesn't matter. Well, it is titled. Yep. And... Shit that went wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Shit that went wrong. A gentleman showed up at our shop. I didn't want to say anything about this during last week's podcast because you all guys, everybody here at the table failed at the oh, find yeah, the yeah, new yeah. bike yeah, contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some unobservant motherfuckers. Yep. Well, you uh, have some, it, it, honestly though, it was like a dark red old bike that looks like a dark red Vespa that you have a hundred of it around. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, I mean, like it really. It was just like that's another one of Phil's red Vespa. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. It's yeah. gone. It, the bike is gone, Steve. I know you're looking around for it. It's gone, and that's it's in a where different the story state. comes in. <laughs> so I will tell the beginning of the story, and Oscar will finish the story because that's how it fucking happened. Yep. So gentleman shows up in my shop or at my shop with a mysterious orange scooter thing. Is this a young gentleman? A no. middle-aged gentleman? No, a my age gentleman. Okay. So you can call that middle if you want. I'll oh, take I that. Oh, I thought it was an older guy. Did he have a spike nice. protruding from his skull? Einspike? <laughs> <laughs> no, but his okay. last name is quite German. So the guy shows up. It's a German. It's a German. So the guy shows up, and, and I'll pass this around, and you guys, you know, just, you know, just keep scrolling. Uh, but pass it to Steve mostly so he can oh, see yeah, what we're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And so the trick is, I see this handlebars, this set of handlebars out of the back of the truck, and I, I instantly have no idea what the <laughs> fuck the bike is. Pass it to him before it times out, and I got to recode into it, because, you know, whatever. Just touch it. Just swipe it a little bit there, Steve. So anyway, but on initial blush, I saw the handlebars. Oh, that thing's cool. And I saw the front end of it, and I swear to God, I thought it was a Simpson Schwalbe. And a Simpson Schwalbe is kind of a weird um kind of a weird bike anyway okay um it's a east german bike that was obtained by the russians um oh, yeah. simpson schwalbuster like simpson schwalbuster exactly so the the simpson schwalba is a bike that has like moped size 16 inch wheels and uh that's what i thought it was i really when i saw this thing i was pretty certain i was pretty certain that the bike that was in the back of the truck was a Simpson Schwalbe. And now you understand why, because you now have seen a picture of a Simpson Schwalbe. However, it was not a Simpson Schwalbe. And on closer inspection, I realized, I honestly don't know what the fuck this bike is. And I don't often get to say those things ever. And so I had to do some looking. And fortunately on the frame, it actually had the real original from God VIN plate. Yep. which happens to have all the important German shit 
like type, 75 Romeo. Bowyar, which means year of its birth, uh, 1956. Uh, frame number, Fahrzeugnummer. And it gave you the Hubraum, which is the, the cc's of the motor. And then it gave you, I like it how it says the Leergewicht, and it has the, uh, the total gewicht. So it gives you the gross weight and the uh, operational weight. Fucking awesome. So based on that tag, from the Hinterberger Schreit und Company, <laughs> research ensued. But when it showed up, I got to say, I was like, eh, eh. Uh, uh. Seven, ran on hydrogen? 75 cc's, right. It's, it's, it's the Hindenburg Mark II. Uh. And, uh, yeah. Oh, the huge manatees. Uh, it was, so it was one of those things where the second I saw it, I was like, I don't know what this is and I'm not that interested in it. Because the second it was uh, quirky, 1956, mm. German and 75 cc's, I knew that the translation for that is unobtainium. And this fella thought that he had discovered the American Pickers home run of the century. <laughs> You've seen the pictures. And it's a respray, but the guy did go to a lot of trouble to match the original factory color. Good on him. But this guy was so fucking let down when I looked in the back of the truck. And mind you, the motor was in a separate Box, yeah. container. And I looked at the back of the truck and I looked at the thing and I was like, didn't even let him say he was trying to sell it to me. I was like, we won't work on that. Nobody will work on that. But we'll I, take the body off no, and put it on a helix. <laughs> 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 Fucking pagans. But, but what I did tell him was, but that will look beautiful hanging on the wall of your garage. Or if you can find like a TGI Fridays or Quaker Steak and Lube, but give you a couple mm -hmm. of bucks for mm -hmm. it. That would be a cool thing to have hanging on the wall. But that's never going to run again. And this guy was like, oh, I, 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 I was trying to see if you wanted to buy it. And I just started laughing. <laughs> and I just, I just straight up. Was that up, a gut laugh or was it a I did a straight, no, a... I did a straight like, <laughs> ha, no way in fuck. I was like, dude, that's, that was obsolete about two years after they built it. Call Hoffert. <laughs> <laughs> He'll buy anything. Oh boy. So do you think that, was that equivalent to like a wildfire scooter now? Well, and we have to think about it. Yes. So if you were in the, if you were here in the United States in 1957, 1958, right. this company called Cosmopolitan Motors that imported this thing, PA. they were basically outside of Philadelphia and their whole jam was they went over to Europe where the dollar was 10 to one strong. So the dollar to the Deutschmark was a 10 to one strong. And they went in there and they went and found everything that wasn't a Vespa or a Lambretta. Uh. And they bought them. And you could go to a dealership in Cleveland and buy an NSU or a Zundop mm -hmm. or a Durkop or many of these other German brands that nobody ever heard of here. But what, it, Be is Bella German? Zundop Bella. Oh, oh that's yeah. Bella. Okay. Yep. Zundop Bella. And uh, the Germans, right? The Germans. So the NSU made the cars too, right? The yes, NSU they did. The NSU right? Prince and all the other good shit. Yeah. Yep. So all these German companies had zero representation in the United States. Mm -hmm. But to this guy, Cosmopolitan Motors, it meant for the unbelievably ridiculous price of about $80 in 1956 currency, he could put one of these in a crate. And... Along with 40 or 50 of its brothers, yeah. and ship them over here to America, right. where right. they would sell them for 300. Yeah, yeah, like 280 something, 300. Yeah, yeah 300. 300 bucks in, so in the 50s. If you can buy something for 80 bucks and sell it for 300 bucks, doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. what it is, exactly. And it is, doesn't that sound exactly like the Chinese scooter formula? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at the time, bouncing back from World War II, Japan and Germany did not have a reputation for building indestructible items right. because True. their their factory stuff, their infrastructure wasn't complete yet. And what did, what did it have going for it? Motherfucker, it was cheap. It was cheap. And it was cheaper than buying a real motorcycle. It was cheaper than a lot of things. And Cosmo didn't care. Cosmo's in it to make money. 
he'll be happy to print another ad in Cycle Magazine circa 1956. So the bike showed up 1956, and it said HMW 75 on it. Yep. And I have never seen one in my life that I'm aware of. I immediately went and grabbed my Motor Scooters of Germany poster, mm -hmm. and it wasn't on there. So I was like, <laughs> it's hard for me to even imagine that there's something called a scooter that I wasn't aware of. Okay. But here it was. And then the guy goes, well, on the title, it says 1958. And I went, fuck you. Title. Title. Mm -hmm. Title. And he pulls out a clean, brand new Ohio title. And I said, tell me you have the original yellow document that, that they don't care about. Yeah. And he goes, no, they, they kept that. And I was like, you didn't photocopy it or at least take a picture of it? Yeah. So I basically looked at the thing and I go, realistically, man, I need to know dollars, real dollars. How much money do you want for this thing? Oh, well, you know, I, I was figuring I could get, I was figuring I could get maybe a grand for it, maybe, <laughs> maybe 1200, 1300 for it. And I went, no, nah, dude, no, no, you the story of this bike is somebody's going to buy it. Somebody's going to put 4,000 into it and then they'll have a $2,000 bike Right. Right. that yeah. nobody wants to buy because parts don't exist on gotta planet have a boner for earth. Thing. And it's right? in pieces and it's in pieces. Right. And so he was pretty let down by that. And so he was bumming, but I took some pictures as I showed you the pictures and I said, well, you know, here's my card. Do what you're going to do. I'm not trying to tell you how to leave your life, but right now my interest in this bike is squatouche. Yeah, go go find your pot of gold. <laughs> I have a book of uh, motor or motor scooter obscura. Yeah, and I I could find something out on that. I'm sure it's in that book. Mm. It lists every single oddball scooter that you've ever seen in your life. Well, then, then you've never seen it. I should yeah. say never seen it in your life. So that's why you know it's it's like that's why I started learning about like the pigeons and yeah. the, oh, all yeah, the weird yeah, yeah. Yep. like yeah. the so, cool stuff. Off he fucks. Uh, so I took pictures rabbits, of it, though. Sorry. Fuji's. Fuji rabbits. Yeah. So I sent the pictures. I contacted my friend Anna, and my friend Anna um, is like the German scooter maven of America. If there's a German scooter, she knows about it. And I hit her on the Facebookies, and I, you know, Anna, I have no interest in this, but because we're friends, if you tell me to give this guy some money, if you know what it is, and you think it's valuable... Get, give me the go-ahead. I will give him money in your name. I will hold it here until you can get here to buy this bike, to, right. get it, to pick the bike up. And I've done that for a lot of my friends before on bikes I'm not interested in owning. Right. Because, again, if I buy it, nothing's going to happen to it. It is going to sit next to the other 18 bikes that I actually like that I won't ever get to. <laughs> okay. You start making coffee tables out of them or something just to put in your house. Art. Just yeah, art. Yeah. Just, yeah. Again, need a bigger house. Yeah. yeah. So No, don't. Don't do that. <laughs> I didn't say it hurt them. I just said <laughs> make them into a table. I, I've done it. I mean, my, if you if you go online and search Vespa grill, yeah, yeah, the first picture is my. I made a grill out of a, grill. Of, of a picture of a yeah. of a, a Vespa frame. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. The 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 gas tank. I made a an actual proper grill. There it is. Charcoal on the bottom, and actually the seat covers the grill <laughs> on it. So yeah, that's that's. That's yeah. my bike. That's a real thing. Yeah, there it is. That, that is exists. very cool. That is, that's my, yeah. the back of my house. <laughs> and it's just it's just perfect in every way that the rear luggage rack that he has on the back of it. It's the, it's the barbecue grill barbecue rack. barbecue grill. <laughs> right. And so that that is behind Oscar's place. And you actually, should've, you should have mounted it backwards so it covered the grill. Well, the, the kickstand, well, the kickstarter actually blows air into the charcoal. Right. Oh, to, to get it's a fan of charcoal. Yeah. 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 Which I love the fact that when the seat is down... You can't tell it's a grill. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So it's <laughs> when somebody tries to steal it, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh shit, there's some charcoal in this. The ash about just falls out. Of, yeah. <laughs> the ash just falls out the bottom. So this bike really uh it didn't so I gave Anna the requisite amount of time. And she actually po posted back. She's like, Yeah, I I'm not interested in that. And I was like, Well, it's it's gonna be pretty cheap. I have a feeling if you make an make an offer. And so then, then she said, I, because I originally said you could probably have this bike for, for next to free, you know, short money. Right. And then when I told her, I was like, well, if you make a reasonable offer and she goes, oh, I thought you said it was free. Uh, it was next to free. Yeah. Didn't say it was free. So any, any who. 
She's uh, not. She's one of us. She's definitely not interested. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's we the, ain't she's teaching got, her. She's yeah. got vampire. There's no next to free for John here, right? Yeah. So she's she's no. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's so it's a bunk of CC and it's not running. So it's zero CC. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And that is 100 percent what she was expecting. Mm-hmm. So again, so I, of course I told the guy to go fuck off. Right. So I told the guy to go fuck off. And then I got to thinking. Oh no. Well, let me I call. I make it. a German grill. I, I said, so just, so just, you know what? Let me call the dude. Cause let me see what I can do. It's he's had four hours of cooling off period. Mm. So since, so can. Yeah. Since he's had a cooling off period, maybe just maybe, maybe it's time. Maybe this is the, maybe this is the thing. And so I figure, all right, so we'll give the guy the cooling off period. And uh, I give the guy the shout and I'm like, Hey man, be honest with me. Just be completely fucking honest with me. What do you need for that fucking bike? And he goes, well, the I'd bat- like to, I'd like to double my money. I'd like 500 bucks. The battle of bourbon's <laughs> looking pretty good right now. And I said, no, man, no, no way. He goes, well, I got the title. And I go, yeah. And I said, well, <laughs> the number Freaking I had vegans. in my mind was 200. <laughs> and so he goes, 250. So I said, okay, bring it over. So he brought it over, $250 changed hands right quick in a hurry. And he's a super nice guy. And uh, so that's great. So we got it. And I put it here in the shop. And I didn't say any word to anybody nobody about it. And nobody, nobody noticed and it. nobody noticed it <laughs> at all. I really didn't happen to walk around or anything. No, 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 we, no, we just got to business last yeah, week. We, we, did. Just, mm-hmm. you know, we did. We did just get right to business. I keep late. rubbing this in my face. Like, I'm like, what the hell? I'm, well, so after the podcast, we were having one of our obligatory cigarette breaks outside. And I, I, I said, you guys. So they sent him in and they found the bike pretty quick. But Oscar had a fucking unnatural mm-hmm. reaction to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We weren't me. even in class, and he put his hand up. Yeah. I, I did. You went home. Oh, afterwards. No, was, you, no, no he, was still, he was still alone. Oh, you, you were there? He was yeah, we were eyeballing it, and that's when Oscar, he poked me with his dick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, got a, I got a stiffy. Sorry about that. <laughs> and anytime, anytime yeah. I would say anything about the bike, Oscar would just say, like, I want that. I was like, yeah. ooh, 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 me, ooh, me, ooh, me, ooh, me, ooh. me. You're I like, if that. I could find somebody that might want to restore it, and he was like, ooh, me, 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 me. And, and like, anytime I would get a sentence out, he's just like, me, <laughs> me, the guy in the front row with his hand you up. literally, I think, said, it has to be somebody that's a complete moron because this is going to be a pain <laughs> in the ass. And he was like, me. No, I did. I said those yeah. exact words. I'm like, I'm that moron. Come on. <laughs> so, here, so here's the thing. I, I've, the, the, my primal we best bike that, that I own. We wasn't here. It's a, it's a 1958 well, right, Allstate. Oh, yeah. So I've yeah. always wanted something older yep. than my Allstate. Yep. And I've always liked the handlebars, and, and, just in general. And strangely enough, you've managed to find something older than your Allstate yeah, and more handle. European. And more, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Austrian, Austrian. Yep. Yeah. So no, it's a, 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 I just like the, the look of it. It was, it was It's a cool looking bike. So does your new pad in wherever you're moving, like, do you have to put it in your living room or do you have a place <laughs> to work on? I, I, I'll... I'll let my car be outside of the garage now. I've never done that before, Is even it, when I was here. Now I have. I was like, like, fuck it. An integrated swing arm? Or is there an engine? And no, a- no. Engine and swing arm. Oh, then you're, you're golden. I mean, so, can you just throw a Honda engine in it? So the frame yeah. looks like Blasphemer. a... Blasphemer. Yeah, it looks, <laughs> looks like a um, like a Lambretta. So it's yeah. a tube frame yeah. Yeah. with all the stuff and the side panels. And, the- and we went through it, and we had enough spark mm. to electrify Oscar. Mm-hmm. Right, so we cranked, the, took the spark plug out, and ran the flywheel. Touch it here, and touch, touch it, it here. here. Touch the wire here, and then ground yourself. And I was like, this is, "Okay, it's it's yeah, fuck you, so. dude." <laughs> <laughs> Jesus hell, I'm gonna make you eat a bath oh mint. Please eat some it's, meat. Oh, to calm down, that's oh fucking oh vegans. I know. It smells weird. It doesn't even smell like a fart. <laughs> no, it does. It, it smells like pizza, man. I'm dying. <laughs> it's like burnt plastic. It does. It smells like burnt plastic. You're exactly right. I think I'm dying. Uh, <laughs> you got a 404 did you, hair in your asshole. Yeah. Did well, you, you can only yeah. hope. Did you yeah. key, keister some lacquer thinner or something? Yeah, these guys, this guy's broke. <laughs> so, <laughs> that over here. Jesus Christ. So within seconds of this deal going down, Kromke's on his phone activating his VPN. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
set yeah. the VPN to the Austria server and turn uh, location services off, and you get all kinds of websites. I know that's what I here. do. That's the right. best I, way to I've, do I've it. I've never heard of that. I, I, I'm surprised that I didn't. And I so didn't know he that. was coming up with the name of the president of the club. Everybody yeah. in the world in thinks one they second. live in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, you get the best Hulu channels, yeah. right? So <laughs> you get the weirdest commercials, like. <laughs> but <laughs> better, better than the shit I'm getting. I'm ready to not see ads for boner pills. So uh, <laughs> or sports betting. Or hey, sports do you know betting. where I can get oh some God. information about sports betting? Welcome yeah. to Ohio, man. So Dan had the name of the president of the club for this bike within minutes. Within right. minutes, we had an address. We had photographs. We had information. But what came with the bike was the mother load. We had parts diagrams. Yeah. We had original parts books from Cosmopolitan Motors. We had the original factory owner's manual. Chewed on by John Meckelfresh's mice. Mother, no, not mine. They're gone. Yeah. Those, <laughs> <laughs> Flambeed. So it was pretty great that we had yeah. all this anecdotal information. So we went to the back of the shop for our podcast listeners. We went over and we started looking at the gut pile. So we started like John's going, okay, well, is there are, is this here? Because originally, all of us said the same thing, Predator motor or Briggs 5 horsepower? Because it's just so it's such an obvious thing. The gas tank looks like new inside. So yeah, bolting a Briggs motor into that thing is easy peasy, George and squeezy, right? No big deal. Or a GX, it, like a GX would be perfect. Anything. Because that original motor is chain drive. It's chain drive. So it's already right. kind of prepped for that yeah. kind of setup. So It wouldn't have even been hard. But then we started doing a forensics into the motor. Because this bike has only 1,600 miles on yeah. it. Yeah. Okay? Or 1,600. Is it a four-stroke? Kilometers. Two-stroke. Two-stroke. Two two-stroke, two two-speed. Yeah. Piston ported. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So it has the same fast yeah. or faster, faster, or faster, Fat, yeah. slow, slow or, or super slow. Yeah, hills slow or flat or super low. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seventy-five cc's, baby. Well, and this is their high-end version or of not it. going at all. Yeah. Oh, this is the high. This end is version. the high-end one oh, because my. usually they had. Moped 50 cc. Oh, that's right. And this, this was the, their high-end 75. Not so a moped. When you get that going, yeah, just wave to John when you're passing him. Hey, and like, verses. <laughs> and <his> verses. <laughs> well, but here's an nobody thinks that's funny anymore. Just so you know. <laughs> so we found a very obviously sprocket, a very obviously blown up basket, clutch, clutch basket, clutch basket, yeah. because they had welded the primary gearing to the clutch basket. So that was how they done it. Was the the drive well, from chain the factory? That's how they built oh. it. There's a primary chain yep. that runs from the crankshaft to, to the transmission. a sprocket that's welded to the back of the clutch basket. Right, right. Exactly. So rather than having an output gear on behind the clutch, which many bikes would have, they'd have an output gear, a nice, you know, sometimes bevel drive gear, sometimes just back cut gear. Well, this then had what looked like a bicycle chain ring, like a front chain ring and a bicycle welded up to the clutch basket. Well, consequently, that is very obviously the weak point of the setup, right? And so it was kaput. It was kaput in the biggest way something kaput. could be kaput. You can, you but, know, somebody probably just wound that thing up and dumped the clutch and yeah. scattered it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the good news, though, is it's something that you could do a junkyard's ward re repair on. I say just put, I mean, a centrifugal clutch with a sprocket on yeah. the crankshaft. Yeah. And just a, a sprocket on the back, and it should go. It should go. I agree. You, but then you'll need a. Oh, you without you put you, a comet clutch you don't on. Mean, it. You don't mean a, a very no just no a clutch. Just, just a, a straight, comet clutch. Yeah, just not even clutch. just a straight yeah. Yeah. centrifugal yeah. clutch. Right. Mm -hmm. You put a comet clutch on there. Because you have two speeds. Hopefully, fine. hopefully right. the low speed is enough. It's enough. Yeah, yeah. That, that you can roll. You know, it'll, you can ride around in grass and stuff. Yeah, I'm not probably going on the freeway or anything of that thing. <laughs> hopefully, it'll hit stall. If you let off the gas and wait long enough, it'll stall out, and you can shift gear and go into high. But Oscar, it's happens, only two speeds. So Oscar, where you work, how far do you go? Need to go to find an engineering department that has fabrication capabilities. Walking distance? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. when you take that broken part into oh, them yeah. and say, make this unbroken again? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think that, yeah. Yeah, laser cutting the shit out of that thing and just kind of <laughs> doing a new... I'm pulling a neck and yeah. custom building like yeah. the whole fucking thing all over again. Right. So yeah. I... Except in a little bit higher gauge. So ex Probably, yeah. Well, explain yeah. to the, the listeners the letter that was in with the bike. Oh, so there's a, a uh, typewriter 
uh, letter from the original owner. Like 1968? Yeah, something like that. uh, Asking the uh, Cosmopolitan Cosmopolitan Motors Motors in, in, in Philly for the parts list of the specific parts, including the gear. Yep. And the clutch cover, yeah. and I think the the the, the shroud, yeah. yeah, cooling shroud, uh, asking for for that uh, yeah. for those parts, but um, right. apparently he never pulled the pin and actually bought the damn thing. So that's and Co- and I have a lot of history with Cosmopolitan Motors. Uh, once they had a bike in their their relationship with that bike wasn't like we're going to have this bike for twenty years. They were like we have two containers. And so in that packet is advertising from 1960, oh, yeah. no, 1958 Eight, yep. cycle magazine showing Moto Perilla mm-hmm. and like four or five different brands, Zundep, Moto Perilla, et cetera, Cosmopolitan Motors. And you could see where that, that particular, um, the Bambi, HMW Bambi, <laughs> right? So the Bambi was listed, you know, the Bambi scooter, which they, they called it the Cosmopolitan scooter. Yeah. That's so called they, a Bambi, really? I mean, in, it's a, in, in other Austria, areas, yeah. In Austria. They call it the Bambi. But in Cosmopoli- in the United States of America, it's called the Cosmopolitan 75. I like Bambi better. Yeah, well, I think too. I think we all do. I want to know who what Bambi's mother was, though, because she was, like, murdered <laughs> well, at the beginning of the <laughs> I movie. I thought you were going to say she was hot. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> here's, the, here's the funny thing about this particular bike. In Year of Our Lord... 2019, four years ago, mm. right? Uh, in, in May of 2019, or actually April, because they do the dates backwards there. One of these sold for 9,700 US dollars. Really? Really. Yeah, really. In, and, an, au- in an auction. Yep. yep. At in an auction. So, uh, wow. Holy shit. Uh, there you go, Oscar. Yeah. There you go. Good stuff. So, yeah. So now you have to get a, a, a motorcycle for its companion named Thumper. Thumper, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so that's an example of shit that don't work. That guy thought he was pulling some junkyard wars. Hey, I'm sorry, some American picker shit. He thought he was going to come in here and get 1200 bucks for a bike he spent 200 bucks on. And it turns out he broke even. Now, had he done the research that you and you and me did, he'd realize that you make it run, you got a $9,000 bike on your hands. Which wasn't, I mean, Crown Key obviously did it the easy way, but if you if you go online right now and try to search for that damn thing, there's barely any pictures. Yeah, there's not a lot that at comes all. up. There's no videos, I, barely at all. There's some moped ones. Yeah. Maybe a couple in YouTube, and that's it. There's it's nothing Same thing there. like with the Kia Rockster. Yeah. Or Rockster. Rockster, yeah. You have to go to you have to go on to a Korean website and translate. It's it. not a Kia; it's an Asia Motor. Oh, sorry, Asian. Sorry, I mean get it right. What I think is you hilarious. It thing. doesn't matter. There's twelve different things on the title. So the first <laughs> one that I found, the first one that I found was this it's fire. Like Johnny Cash's Cadillac. When you go to fucking register it, <laughs> title weighs fifteen pounds. The uh, <laughs> the first one I found was the one that I have up on the display, which is clearly the victim of fire damage, right? So it has no tires. It has nothing. And this piece of shit sold for $1,700. So if the piece of shit sells for $1,700, that probably explains to me why a day later, Anna contacted me back and said, oh, by the way, I am interested in that. Remember that bike I wasn't interested in? I'm interested now. Now I want it. (laughs) And Oscar said... And, and I, Dude, it was already in Milwaukee. I don't need your consent for I that. already have it in Milwaukee. It I was, was No shit. It was already in Milwaukee by yeah. the time she said she was interested in it. Yeah. He didn't fuck around. There was no grass growing on him. He came in on Saturday, worked at the shop, helped us PDI oh, yeah, bikes, yeah. Yep. and then we loaded it on the back of his RAV, and off he fucked. And it was already in Milwaukee on Sunday. Yeah. So, A couple days after we talked to that thing. It's fate, and you should have that bike. Oh, I... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it just as he has. He thinks it was fate because the, the way he was acting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was yeah. no doubt who it was going to. I could have been the biggest cock in the world and just been like, well, accept Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So we, But the, the layers of this deal are very strange. Without me asking, well, we bought a house, so we need a lawnmower. So Oscar oh, yeah. brought us a lawn. You didn't buy my mom's house, did you? No, no, no. Totally different house. But uh, <laughs> it's this one's on West 152nd. Uh-huh. 
But Oscar brought us a lawnmower. So he brought us a running Briggs and Stratton powered. And it's got, it's power. It's, it's drive. It's self-drive. Yeah. I've never owned a self-drive lawnmower. It's a nice one. I've never owned a yeah. self-drive lawnmower, self-propelled lawnmower. Never owned one. So he brought us one of those. Okay. And then he brought me the title to the trail. Yeah. So I got the title for the trail, which have, has been in my warehouse since our last excursion. From Mid Ohio from the last But year. apparently now I have to give him some tires. Because the the, the, the fucking H Dem the HMR. Yeah, those, wait, are, HMW, those are cooked as Bambi. Bambi, the Bambi, thank you. Is, yeah. Bambi's got some exquisite white wells on them that are held together by checking. And uh, so we're gonna find a three inch by twelve inch, which is not as easy as you think it is, tire that's not a knobby. If you want a three by twelve knobby, the world's your oyster. But if you want something that isn't a knobby, good fucking luck. So let alone a white wall. Yeah. So today we were looking on the internet at some three by twelve tires, and there aren't a lot of choices. So uh, that was kind of fun. But in typical Cleveland Moto horse trading fashion, none of it makes any sense. None <laughs> of it makes any fucking sense whatsoever. So there we are. Okay, fail. Did that part end up out here? Oh, all right. oh God, don't lose it. I know, no Crumpy shit. Crumpy had it last. It's worth its weight the in gold. gold. Right, it is worth Dan, its weight what did in you goddamn do with gold. It? It's, it's up by the TV, Dan, you had by it. The TV monitor. Dan, you had it. Uh, Oscar. I think it's, it's stapled to a piece of paper somewhere. Yep, hopefully. Anyway, so let's talk about fail. Fail. Who fails? How do we fail? Everybody fails. Um, you guys can't find it, huh? Yeah. All right. Not important. But you know what? I bet you it's right here. Here it is. Yeah. Sorry, I lost track of it. It doesn't look like what it costs. So, oh, um, by the way, a sleepy bloke broke a seal. And I think uh, he's still in the shitter. Oh, he is. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. good. He's, he, he's done for. Yeah, he needed so. to get that evil piece of shit out of his ass. So, <laughs> <there's>... <laughs> let's stop recording for a second. No, no, no. no. Fuck him. Guess, Not guess, at all. Guess we can't. Cause Not because he's the Saudi guy. At all. <laughs> no way are we let's stopping. Bust, can we bust in on him and take the camera in there? And all right. So here we go. You guys remember we talk about zero electric motorcycles? Mm -hmm. Fail. Zero electric <laughs> motorcycles. So zero electric motorcycles. I sometimes. know my charger failed. <laughs> oh, Steve. We're going there. Steve, <laughs> Steve, by the time we get done, you're going to feel okay. Trust me. I don't feel okay right now. All right. <laughs> zero motorcycles has determined that all model year 2020 and model year 2021, zero S... SR, DS, DSR, FX, and zero FXS models. That's anything Everything. that is not an SRF. Oh, okay. All right, right, right. Or a DSRX mm -hmm. or an SRS. Okay. So all the ones that have the old style frame. Right. Okay. The older style not, frame. Not the new, new, not new, the new, new fancy new ones. Yeah. trellis Ducati style frame. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you have a motorcycle from zero, that is the, yeah exactly yeah, like all, all these, these yeah, or, thank you oscar yeah. all, of, all those. of those thank you <laughs> all of those exactly all right <sighs> these motorcycles have a 12 volt always on module supplying power to the obd2 port that can hmm. potentially fail this module can fail in a way that can discharge the motorcycle's main power pack. Which is happening to mine right now. Beyond a recoverable voltage. No! <laughs> while in storage. In the interest of customer satisfaction, Zero Motorcycles has elected to initiate a voluntary service campaign to remedy the issues. Now, first of all, before you all just shit a golden brick and call Zero and use my name, if you have a motorcycle that's either a 2020 or a 2021, and it is one of those models, please go out to your garage right now and plug that motherfucker in. Right. And you can plug it in and let it go as high as it wants to go, but if it comes down to 60% or so, plug it in. Yeah. Okay? Until we can get shit sorted out for you. In one month, it drops the battery from zero, I mean, from 100 to 60%. I know. In a month? Guys. In I'm, one month. One month. Trust me, I work that's here. that's what it's, mine's doing right now. I work here. If it gets <laughs> below 30 or 20%, if it's, if it's below 30 degrees Fahrenheit outside, it won't charge. So trust me when I tell you, charge your battery up and then inspect it at least once a month. And if you have to plug it in, plug it in. Don't let the battery go below 30% just because then you don't have any cushion. And here's the reason. Okay. 
The remedy is to have zero motorcycles dealers inspect and remove the 12 volt always on module on all affected motorcycles and replace the always on module with a bypass kit provided by zero motorcycles. New Molex crimping tool will be shipped to your dealership. This special tool will be used with this service campaign and future connector repairs or modifications. Tool shipments will be booked and invoiced against dealer's parts accounts. That's kind Wait, of bullshit, they're, they're though. charging you for their mistake. For the tool, yeah, yeah for yeah, the tool yes, to yes. fix their Thank mistake. You. They They're tools. charging me. Yeah, yeah that's fucked They up. are charging me for the tool to fix their mistake. Now, here's why I bring this up. A Molex pin extractor tool, tool yeah. can be bought in quantities of 54 from the usual scumbags on Amazon for $23. And not only do you get the tool that's right for the job. You get pretty colors. You get, yeah, right, exactly. You get 75 other tools. So in addition to the tool, thank you. In addition to the tool that you need, you get 75 other motherfucking tools. Now, this to me seems like a, a sore dick deal. And what I would do if I were zero is I would have directed your dealership to go to this deal or I would have just right. gone to Amazon and I just would have ordered 150 of these kits. Yeah, cuz gee, with with their budget for fucking zero. But I just would have made my I would have made my dealers extra happy yeah, and said the our gift to you. No, but that's what I'm saying. $2,000 basically would have covered every tool for 150 fucking dealers. Or <laughs> this tool right here that I'm holding in my hands that is made by the company that does these things is $160. Holy fuck. So yeah. instead of just letting you buy this tool, they basically took a 55-gallon drum of Vaseline well, and poured sand in it and then lubed up all their dealerships. <laughs> and if you're Canadian, this is $240 Canadian. So my especially angry thing is they're pounding the Canadians in the exchange rate. A That's service, not all they're pounding the Canadians in. <laughs> so a service campaign technical case for each affected motorcycle has been created to support these updates. Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Zero motorcycles will email affected customers directly the week of January the 3rd. Okay. So today, 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 year of our Lord now, we got this. We got this tool. And they charge my parts account $160 for literally this piece of shit. And uh, if you don't think I'm pissed about that, it's principle, like you said. Yeah. It has nothing to do with $160. They should have been, they should, the idea that they are going to, one, send me a part that I didn't ask for. And, bill you and charge you for and it. And then bill my account, add this to my parts account, which I have no control over whatsoever, for a situation that they clearly fucked up. It, yeah, I'm sorry, it, sir. We, I ran you over with my car, but you need to pay for my grill. You pay for my grill, exactly, right. So <laughs> I'm, again... <laughs> I have issues, but that's a failure. Yeah, that's that is a saying. failure. And the, the failure, too, is, look, you take it on the chin because, one, here's one thing I can guarantee. Who in this room has got a brand new $3,000 battery pack from zero? That's right. So his battery pack was below the requisite 85% within his five-year warranty window. Consequently, he got a $3,000 battery pack. And it may be a $0 battery pack pretty soon if I don't put it, my charger on it. And <laughs> so here's the thing. This is the big deal. If you're willing to send out one battery to one customer, $3,000 plus, that's more than $3,000, but, but trust me, if you, you do that. You could send out a tool to every dealership and it would be less. Send out the tool. Send it out to 100 dealers, however, if you have 100 dealers. Send it out to 100 dealers. Yeah. Because still, still. It would be 2300 bucks if you were buying it from Amazon. Exactly. And the and dealers are fixing your problem. Yeah. So I really, really find that this is an example of manufacturing hubris that's a fail. Because honestly, if... If it's something that every dealer would be assumed, if it's a 10 millimeter socket, okay, it's a 10 millimeter socket. 
But I work with companies that when they said you have to replace this item and I opened up the box, yeah. there was a wrench in the box. No shit. I mean, well, I how work- many parts do you buy and they give you the wrench? Of course. I mean, they give it, they, they half the stuff you buy that needs a special wrench yeah. or whatever, they right. give you the tool along with the part you buy. The suggestion, though, that they're going to charge you $160 for not a set of wrenches, but for one single wrench that fits one kind of connector. Can I, can I see that thing? Yeah. yeah like, sure. it's not even special. No, 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 no. no, no it's no. heavy, but it's not special. No, no, no. It's right? machined, but it's... it's yeah. yeah. Look, I appreciate it. And that is probably the very best terminal extractor tool that's ever been built. But at the same time... Like, if you let me have two pieces of metal and my Dremel, <laughs> I can make this. Like, you're, it's not a tool that's like has like some kind of angle that has to move it's, with ratcheting it's, things. It's, or yeah, something. it's not like, a precision, like yeah. with low tolerance. No, it's just a a specific. It's a fork it, that's designed. It's a to fork pop that's. It's just a, pl- a plunger extractor. I have been taking thing. apart Molex connectors for in excess oh, of thirty years. Yeah. I didn't even know they made Molex pin extractor and tools to pick then a clip paper clip in half that's what you do you bend a paper clip in half or you take a pair of really sharp tweezers yep. mm-hmm. and then oh, you have yeah, an adjustable yeah. molex remover tool yeah, yeah. so yeah. if you get a really sharp pair and i've got the pair that's in my toolkit and i can take apart any molex connector yeah. as yeah. often as you want that's as fast as you want that's and true. i don't need this this would be great if you were on an assembly line and you had sure. to build yes. a thousand molex connectors every and it's hour it's always yeah. the same one it's always the, the same, same one, one. Right. so fuck Fuck that. That's some bullshit. Yep. That's a fail, man. That's a fail. And and the uh, electric vehicle fails. I mean, that this is motorcycle related, but how about when GM wouldn't allow all the people that love their EV1, they wouldn't let them buy the vehicle, buy even though they yeah. wanted to buy out their leases because right. they loved that vehicle yeah. and they crushed every yeah. single freaking it's one of them. It's a leased vehicle, motherfucker. Uh, right. Okay, so next... Fail, because fuck it fails. Now, I'm sorry that I'm giving you two fails in a row that are both electric vehicle related, and I I do not like to bombard people with electric vehicle bullshit, but here's electric vehicle fail. So right in front of Dan Kropke right now is a battery, and this battery is not light. It's It's a new battery. It's fucking heavy, and it is a new (laughs) battery. So it is a new New battery. battery. And why I bring this up and why that's sitting right there. It's been lightly fingered too a little bit. Oh, it's been fingered. More than you think. I don't like that I'm so close to the blast radius of it. Yeah. So (laughs) anytime you see a lithium battery apart, you should walk carefully around that lithium battery. There's a little... Lithium battery factory burning in France right now. Oh, is there really? Yeah. Oh, oh Jesus no. fucking Christ. It's going to take forever to... Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, here we go. They'll just bury it and it'll be like those coal mines in Pennsylvania. That or like Chernobyl. Yeah. Chernobyl. They'll make a big egg. And... Mm-hmm. Yeah, All right. So here we go, guys. Has anybody in this room ever parked their motorcycle and walked away from it and not walked back to it for 30 days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most of us, yeah. 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 No, no. We are not qualified to own a new electric scooter. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> In Ohio? <clears throat> Tough days. No, my friend, on earth. Oh, shit. Well, you're right, but it's, it's easier for doing that here in Ohio because winter but <clears throat> yes i agree Ice? no he wants more of the no. coquito okay so nice. i'm gonna read you what's in the owner's manual in the manual oh in the manual oh boy you know the thing you're supposed to read you know the you book that they give you when you buy the bike the one you fling okay not using your new for more than 15 days unplug and store your battery in a safe environment my son is screwed. Hold on, guys. So sitting at the head of the table right now is a guy who's replaced no small amount of electric batteries in electric vehicles because of maybe bad, you know, people that abandoned them, what have you, <clears throat> behind me. Okay, so I'm no stranger to the idea of 
lithium batteries should not be left plugged in mm -hmm. with any sort of a draw on them if you can possibly avoid it. Sure. So here at my shop, if anybody's ever spent some time here, you'd know that my Neo electric scooters have the big rubber cables unplugged from them. Mm -hmm. And the batteries right. are sitting in a 66 degree Fahrenheit room unplugged. In storage mode, if you will. Not using your Neo for more than 15 days, unplug and store your battery in a safe environment. Which you have. Unplug. Yeah. Stored in a safe environment. Yeah. Check. Huh. Guess what happens at 30 days? <laughs> in the manual? They, oh they self-destruct. Jim. They have an internal thing that is a leech? So, my friend, that box in front of you. It's cheap, though, right? Yeah, about four thousand dollars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And well, I'm sorry, that's a twenty-six. Uh, that one's about twenty-one hundred dollars. Oh, good. Okay, good. about twenty-one hundred bucks. Pocket change. Twenty-one hundred bucks. Yeah. <clears throat> so, that brick, that device, that's plugged in right there, twenty-one hundred dollars. Your friend at the head of the table, mm -hmm. this asshole, <laughs> made the mistake of unplugging it, as it says in the manual. And walking away from it more than 30 days. 34 days ago. So basically, like every other lithium battery tells you to store them, keep any kind of leech off of it and put it usually about 3.2. Do you see how unplugged that is? Yeah. Okay. But they manufacture them. So, I mean, isn't there a certain amount of time that they have oh, to Oh, for sit shipping on and all that shit? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, like, I mean, that's a good point. I don't. Uh, okay. Yeah, no shit. So. Maybe there's. I mean, little, it probably spent thirty days on a boat. No, there's, Anybody, a, there's uh, a little paper tab in there that you have to pull. That's what I already <laughs> yes, said. He that. said yeah. the same thing. You guys are oh, been together too long and sharing a brain. Uh, <laughs> so uh, on the top of the battery, you're going to see a little circle. If anybody would like to press that circle and hold it, okay, whoa. press the circle and hold it, whoa, and then whoa, 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 whoa. Give me, give me. <laughs> go ahead, press the circle and hold it, and count how many times it flashes. It's okay. The answer is four. So the answer is four. Okay. If it's it, flashing, it, it yes, it flashed four times, Phil. Thank you. That was quite What's a that mean? light. Flashing four times means that the battery is under F U C K. Exactly. Mode. Flashing four times on this particular device is the flash code that is there to tell you that the battery's internal voltage, each one of those batteries, those cells, is below the required voltage to use of sixty volts. Oh good. Okay. So that battery, that battery. The volts are too low, and it will not let you put a charge into it. So its answer for the volts being too low is to not let you put a charge into it. I'll say that again for the cheap seats. Its answer for the voltage being too low is to prevent you from putting a charge into it. Well, I, figured, I figured out on the zero batteries, I took them apart. Well, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say that. Go ahead. You dropped it. You inspected your battery. You're outside I, I, of warranty. Your battery fine. pack. Yeah. Okay, so I inspected the battery, and they have a solenoid. Mm -hmm. They have a, a a bus bar, but they cover mm -hmm. it in um, like epoxy. So Good you tape. can't. Yep. 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 So you have to get rid of that epoxy. Yep. Go directly to the bus bars. Bridge the bus bars. Yep. And then you can charge it. And what I did was I bought a. Uh, It'll bypass the battery management system. Yeah. Right. And I bought a. Um, I bought two. Um, uh, uh, fluorescent light. Oh, ballast, 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 ballast yeah. that do that are a hundred and whatever volts yeah, they are, and right. I put a diode, put a couple Jesus, diodes you worked in it. Way too hard. All you need to do is literally jumper cable. So a oh, jumper to another battery. Uh, nope, to itself. So inside your battery, just bypass the board. Thank you. Mm. So some people will say to unplug the board. You can unplug the twenty-four pin connector. And you can do that on the zeros, uh, and you can unplug that, and then bypass the board by literally going from one end of the block, the the ground from strap. Zit to zit. Yeah, and it's not, and, and you'll you'll just see the tiniest little spark, tiniest tiniest little spark when you do that, and it bypasses the BMS, and you can hook up your charger, and that will charge it like it's stupid. It'll be dumb charging it, right? It'll it'll take the BMS out of the picture. Now here's my thing, you, we're talking about fail. Fail. That is a five thousand dollar scooter. We've ridden it. Y'all, everybody in this room rode it. it. It's fun. It's a load of fun. It's great fun. I like that scooter. Yeah. We yeah. all love yeah. that scooter. Yeah. Good scooter. <clears throat> we all loved it. However, 
when somebody came to buy it the other day Ooh. and I dutifully plugged in the batteries crickets because that motherfucker that very expensive 27 pound piece of shit decided that it didn't want to be a battery anymore well the problem is your social credit score wasn't high enough <laughs> because you know if your social credit score is high enough yeah you would plug it in every 29 uh, and a half days so Maybe you can do this mm -hmm. sometimes with them. Yeah. Because sometimes with smart chargers and stuff like that, like my tool batteries and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. you put it on and it will try to charge it for 2.2 seconds mm -hmm. and then it'll bork out. Mm -hmm. and you take it off mm -hmm. and you put it back on. Mm -hmm. You take it off and you put it back on. Mm -hmm. So you're you charging it two seconds day. at a time. Mm -hmm. That's and what he it, does up there all day. <laughs> and sometimes if you do it enough times, then it'll be like, oh, oh, it's going to hang. So once it gets the voltage up to a certain level, Okay. If it'll even pulse and charge even for just a little bit each time you plug it in. Depends how the board handles the whole thing, but yeah. Does hey it guys. have a DC direct in on these batteries? Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at the terminals on top, the two the two heavy terminals that are inside that six pin connector or five yeah. pin connector, the two heavy terminals are DC. Positive, negative. Um, that will not help you. That doesn't that, you that's will not still, they not don't directly DCM. connect to the cells, they go through a board. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Which has exactly a solenoid right. on it. It's exactly right. So here's the thing. You know the reason that's sitting right there right now is because the company that represents them in the United States had decided to help the problem by creating two YouTube videos. One YouTube video for the type of battery that's in that hot shit orange Evo we were riding and one YouTube video for the 35 amp hour battery that's in the other one that we rode. They didn't make a YouTube video for this one. Yeah. And by the way, the YouTube video is there specifically to teach you, potentially, the consumer, how to go into a thing that all over it says, don't go in here. <laughs> there are no user serviceable parts inside. Wow. Now, this is the solution that they have for the consumer. When the consumer says... I just gave you $5,000 34 days ago and I'm busy. So I haven't been able to ride it. And now my thing, my toy, my way to work in the morning is a brick. Well, I'm sure your customers are going to be satisfied when you say, Hey, it so, doesn't want to work. And you just say, here, here's these two YouTube videos, watch them and do what it says. And right. you'll be fine. But let me Click. ask you this. Doesn't it have some kind of rating? Like, like, when, when electric scooters come in, like, don't they have to have a DOT to get a license plate and everything? Yeah. So doesn't the DOT, like, they look into it, or they don't give a shit? If I don't see any it. UL listing on this. But, like, wouldn't mm -hmm. they do any kind of test to see if the thing To test up? what? To test if you leave this alone for 30 days, well, it times they, out? I mean, that seems like... Maybe a, that's something they should test. It's yeah. in the manual. In the it's future. you not to do it. You are the devil. Yeah. They're not liable. Yes, and the manual is straight up telling yeah, you... they're not liable. And the manual, though, tells you something that's wrong, is that if you're not, you use it... Unplug it, Plug it. Mm. Right. and store well, the battery in a yeah. clean, clean, dry place. So that's fine. It doesn't mention anything about, by the way, at 30 days, this bitch is going to sleep. And they don't have a thing. Like, their charger is not a smart enough charger that you leave it charged. Like, take the batteries out of the bike and uh, plug them in. Right? It's got to be something you're not doing right. <laughs> Clearly, it's something I'm not doing. Right. You haven't pushed the button the right way. There's a sequence yeah. of how many Clearly. times you push that button. Absolutely. Why don't they just I, have I, a I just can't believe it would be the manufacturer. It's got to be a dealer thing. It's got to be a dealer problem. They That's have a exactly right. reset the trips. Yeah. And that it says if its battery is set, set, has so been sitting for more I'm than 30 days. I'm glad you brought that up. Push Thank the you. button and click. It. So it turns out oh. that you're not wrong. It turns out there are videos that you can watch from the Germans. The Germans. <laughs> and the Germans have said that when you go into one of these machines, when you go into one of these boxes, while you're in there, to install a couple of ring terminals on light wire, 18 gauge wire, feed that light wire outside the case and put a momentary switch on it. So that in 30 days, when your battery does drop itself below, because remember, these things are always having parasitic loss. They're always yeah. draining in some way. And when you plug them in, they really start draining because that's when they go over the cellular network and try to download all the, download all the Chinese porn and the TikTok and the stuff you didn't want. <laughs> it all gets that while you're not, while you're sleeping. So anyway, 
I've watched videos where guys have literally put this beautiful, elegant battery case, which it is, yeah. and had two stupid fucking wires coming out of the side of it with a big button on it so that when the battery times itself out and goes to bed, they can press the big button and hold it, hook up the charger, and hold the button for like three minutes, four minutes, so that the charger gets the battery cells up over right. six volts or seven volts hey. a piece when it goes back into its charging cycle. Can you, can you do me a favor? Sure. Okay, my son's going to call you <laughs> and say that his two batteries are not working. Um, okay? Yes. He tell is. him how much they cost. Yeah. <laughs> and But that's all you tell him. Uh, but <laughs> and, then, and I'm gonna give him a thousand bucks for that bike, and I'm gonna. <laughs> ooh. Sneaky, sneaky! It. I like it. I love it. Because nice. he owes me a lot of money. <laughs> there you go. Sounds like a plan. So, guys, fail. Yeah. That I'm just kidding. By the way, is a fail. Yes, it is. You want to know the ultimate fail? Is under that battery. In that little brown pizza box looking thing mm -hmm. is the NIU diagnostic computer mm -hmm. that you plug into the batteries to test them. And the whole system, it's really a, quite a brilliant little computer. And uh, it won't work if there's no electricity in the battery. Because <laughs> 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 it's, po it's powered by the battery. It is powered by the battery. To give you a result. So, <laughs> mwah, mwah, catch 22, bitch. Well, and that, that, that diagnostic tool is so kick-ass. When you hook it up, it tells you the condition of the 36 batteries inside the case. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. So it does, cool. it does tell you battery one through battery 36, like what the state of charge is of each of those batteries. And when I hooked it up, I was, Oscar was here, and I was fucking motherfucking yeah. this thing so hard. Yeah, yeah. And I was doing what John said. I'm like, okay. I would short out the two grounds on the case. Short out the two grounds. I would listen to it, throw the relay. Mm -hmm. And it would throw the relay, and I would dump the power into it. And then I'd hear, tick. And there's a, there's a little red light on the circuit board that you can't see when the case is together. Right. But when you tear the case apart, which is held together by so much glue, I fucking hate this thing. Plastic case glued to a metal case with like nine screws in it. You don't even need one of those screws. And they could have used one quarter as much glue. And it is, a, it's not cool. But anyway, I found the little trouble light thing. So like as soon as the relay snaps open, when I jumper it, I get the relay to snap open. And there is not a single fucking schematic for that battery. So when I looked at those boards, Oscar's sitting here and I have no schematic for that battery. And I got to figure out which of the high tension terminals I'm going to jumper to each other. <laughs> Game on, buddy. Meltdown. That Game on, welding. Buddy. Yeah, welding. Game on, fucking... buddy. Man, I made... you, you might want to sacrifice a Harbor Freight multimeter to it. Um, he al he would already you, did. <laughs> would you like to grab my Harbor Freight multimeter that is literally welded together right now? It's stuck to the table. I'm the sorry. The smoke came out of it so fast. Uh, hey, Oscar yeah. was here. Oscar was here. Yeah. The, the terminals, the wires on it, just instantly melted. It took less than a second of being on the wrong terminals yeah. to know I was on the wrong terminals. It's impressive how fast the fire can start. Oh, yeah. It was oh, really, yeah. really cool. Um, it was really cool, <laughs> and I'm nice. glad it cost me. Yeah, I mean, we had some ground fault situations when oh, I yeah. was working, and it was like... <laughs> Watch an antenna cable just light on fire instantly. Instantly. And smoke start pouring out of a $350,000 garbage truck that's brand new. You're like, ah! I couldn't drop They laughed. I came running with the fire extinguisher. Oh, yeah. like, you weren't really going to use that fire extinguisher. I'm like, what are you talking you about? bet your ass I will. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't drop the Harbor Freight multimeter fast enough. Yeah. Is I just, I touched the terminal to the other one. I was like, well, you know, we'll know because I'll get some voltage. We'll get some voltage. Something will happen. Right. I'll get some voltage. And I was touched it, on it there. Was it current or something? What's that? Was it on current? Clearly. I mean, the meter was on current. No, the meter was, was on. on yeah, voltage? the meter's on voltage. Yeah. The meter's on voltage. It's just that amperage overpowers voltage. So, you know, sure, our situation and nominally not fused. is... Those things aren't... Those, old, those meters aren't fused? Not enough. <laughs> no, <laughs> not enough. They're not isolated <laughs> enough. That's, that's what right. I mentioned, too. It was like, yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah, and that was... Gr I mean, I didn't even bother taking it apart because I know it's just a smoke show. But anyway, so game yeah, on, buddy. Just change out the leads. It'll be fine. 
That's my second set of leads on that one. So it's, it's, it's been fucked twice. I changed, the, I changed the battery and I changed the fuse in it. And I put a better fuse in it. Not a thicker fuse, a better fuse. So I put a better fuse in it. And uh, now it's confused. A, this time it didn't have a chance. So you didn't put a penny in there? No, no. no. 22, 22, 22 long rifle round. <laughs> yeah. 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 There we go. It wasn't like John. Slow you blow. Audible. Slow blow. You get an audible. <laughs> audible. <laughs> I smell cordite. Ow. <laughs> hey, so sticking with your uh, electric yeah. vehicle theme. Okay. So I have, Only if it's a fail. I have a 404 fail. Okay. Oh, shit. Uh, Error 404. This was reported in three news sources, three major, I think New York Times, CNN, and one of the other ones. <gasps> Oh my so fake news! A bunch, so like a whole bunch of fake different fake news. news. I think it was on Fox. One star. Too, so fucking. <laughs> all right, all right. Anyways, um, one of the guys that worked for Tesla during the initial getting it approved for uh, roadworthiness with a, a co-pilot driver has come forward and said that the footage and the whole process that they gave to the government was staged, and the car could never mm-hmm. actually drive by itself. In the in the uh, in the initial stages in of the, the initial projects? stages of the um, uh, government giving into it. Well, who would let it? I mean, who would <laughs> so, prove it? Elon's oh. having a hell of a year. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, who, but why did they even approve it anyway? <laughs> Seriously, well, that was that, that initially was the selling point, the key feature of yeah, the damn really? autom- the fully yeah. auto- Well, they they toned it back initially. It was like fully automated, like self driving. Now it's like um, driving assist. assists. That's the new word because they don't want to get any more losses. But that was a selling point of the Tesla to be this, battery and also self-driving. If they can find this out and this guy's legit, the Chevy commercial. Uh, I, the Chevy commercial I saw the other day. They're driving the Chevy truck oh. and they're playing hand jive and yeah. clipping and clapping and everything else. There's and no and, Freddie Mercury song. And they are <laughs> real rocky or whatever. Not paying attention. To telling you, shit. telling you, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. The new Chevy self-driving feature. Well, you know when, when the you don't fucking- have to touch the wheel occasionally. You've got lane assist, right? And so you, if you don't touch the wheel, it'll give you a little red warning, and then it shuts the system off, right? It throws you into a ditch. Well, that's I mean that's the way yours yeah. does it, right? right? And mine does it the exact same way. So like if 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 I'm just playing around and I wander, I could either have it give me a little vibration. Or I can have it give me active lane assist, where mm. it'll... Which is so much fun when you're on a motorcycle, because I pull up behind, the, like if they're in the yeah. high speed yeah. lane, get into their radar. put your wheel right in the radar, like right in the back quarter panel, and you can move their car over. And you can over. move their car over? <laughs> what? Yeah, seriously. You, you pull up, you take, you go yeah. right up, right by the rear fender. Oh, uh-huh. my God. And you can yeah, see, see the, the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you pull up right next to it, and then you move over a little bit, and yeah. the car moves over a little bit. <laughs> it moves over, and then I get them because they're on you know, the texting, yeah. texting yeah. lane. Woo. So I move them over until they hit the rumble strips. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Until, they, until he snaps back and takes you out, and you become a Well, no, I'm star. watching for that. But I'm gonna, because, because this, Steve, Steve yeah. again, I normally don't do this, but this is a fail. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is a fail. A huge one. And I got to read this because this is one of those fails. Yeah. It's epic. Yeah, it's, it's a, a yeah, fucking... It's a, I'm going to read like, it. Like, it might be the end of Tesla with the lawsuits that are going to come. Uh, you. you don't think so? No. Too many fanboys. Again, 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 again. They'll just credit the guy and give remember, him three stars remember, and he'll be done. <laughs> once you're in the bar, yeah. you've made it past the doorman. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And then once you go up to the bar and you order a drink, and somebody hands you the drink, and you drink the drink, you've made it past the bartender. Right. And then you leave and you get in your car, and you get past five or six cops. You've made it past the cops. Right. The doorman's no longer culpable. True. Now you hit somebody and they die. Is the doorman culpable? No. Is the bartender culpable? We've argued about that, and there have been cases, Mm -hmm. but usually no. Right? right? Are the five cops you passed before you killed the guy culpable? No. Mm -hmm. So the point being... The car is. Whatever trickery trickery it took to get them to the next phase of DARPA testing or whatever it was... Right. But... but, And and every one of those self-driving cars is going to have a caveat emptor. That you are not supposed to take, you know, you're still supposed to be sitting in Put the cockpit, in but paying I think, attention to the vehicle. But I think what this ready is, to react if something bad happens. So I read. I don't think it's so much in this article. If you read, if you do more research and find the longer one, right? Um, I think it's he's saying that they're 
they literally cannot do what they said it can do. Like so, the reason it's hitting trucks and stuff is because it doesn't have the technology that they said it does. So, yeah, but the thing is, uh, you guys want me to read this? Yeah. 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 A 2016 video that Tesla used to promote its self-driving technology was staged to show capabilities like stopping at a red light and accelerating at a green light. So this is all about color light mm -hmm. observation that the system did not have, according to testimony by senior engineer. It was colorblind. The video, which remains archived on Tesla's website, that's interesting, the video's still there, mm -hmm. was released in October 2016 and promoted on Twitter by Chief Executive Officer Elon Musk as evidence that the Tesla drives itself. Right. Now, clearly the part in concern, being concerned being, was, was the red light, green light. I think there's more to it than that, but that's what this article says. Okay, okay. but the Model X was not driving itself with technology Tesla had deployed. Ashok Eluswamy, director of autopilot software at Tesla, admits that he was in the trunk activating, no, <laughs> in the trunk activating it. He said in the transcript like, of a July deposition taking his evidence in a lawsuit against Tesla for a 2018 fatal crash involving a former Apple engineer. Okay? So anyway. They got rid of the right kind of engineer. <laughs> well, so the person, and this is the idea, is the tagline, and this is hubris. This is that gets into the hubris. The hubris is when you say the person in the driver's seat is only there for legal reasons. He is not doing anything anything the car is driving itself okay that particular element the red light green light business the red light green light business is clearly what <laughs> somebody was like foot red off light, the brake you light. know red light green red light, light right green yeah i'm hearing light. that too it's a little hum yeah, so i don't know it's somebody's fan going somewhere so you hear that it's your pacemaker i don't know, I don't know. anyway so I can't tell whether I can hear it outside of cans or inside the cans. Refrigerator. refrigerator. Is it the refrigerator? Oh, okay. okay, all right. Yeah, to create cool. the video, Tesla used 3D mapping on a predetermined route from a house in Menlo Park, California, to Tesla's then headquarters in Palo Alto. Drivers intervened to take control in the test runs. When trying to show that the Model X could park itself with no driver, a test car crashed into a fence in Tesla's parking lot. Ah, the intent of the video was not to accurately portray what was available for customers in 2016. The intent was to portray what was possible to build into the system. Oh, not sure they've, they've talked about it like that. No, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, but at it all. wasn't an adver like an advertising video. I like where it says when the Tesla re when Tesla released the video, hubris. Musk tweeted, "Tesla drives itself through urban streets to highway to streets, then finds a parking spot." <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, look. And then he was talking fire. about what the dream was. I know people can't. I know <laughs> people to the that ground. can't do that, yeah. right? So don't tell me that the car can do it autonomously. I don't <laughs> care. Anyway, so yeah, that's a fuck up. Yeah. That yeah. is a that is a error. Four hundred four. I mean, something's gonna happen. Out of that, Smart, right? not found. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It, There's always gonna be a condition you're going to find with any type of AI, mm -hmm. right? That will it will fail. Yeah. I mean. I got to ask John. I got to do an argument with an AI bot today. No, but have you? Did you do the chat bot thing? I'm uh, sure. Chat GTP? I'm sure you did. I'm sure yeah, that and, AI and it bot. failed. I well, made it fail. Well, check this out, though. At work, we've been instructed now, our big boss, the, one of the CEOs, said yeah. a thing to everybody that if we have any articles, even if they're approved or anything, to run it through chat AI because oh, it no. corrects things. What? Like our big boss asked it to how, explain. I, I can find the email. It's hey, like, yeah, it asked right. it how it, he asked AI how right. a carburetor works. Yeah, and yeah. AI came back with a perfect explanation, written yeah. in perfect English, yeah. and all the stuff perfectly yeah. laid out. Our our friend AVE uh, yeah. just did a chat bot oh, yeah. for how to wire a three way switch. Yep. Yeah. Now anybody who's ever put a a fan in their kitchen knows that you got to have the traveler signals, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And you also understand it can be a little confusing understanding how black can go from being angry to not angry and then being angry again, mm -hmm. all in the space of, th you know, three boxes. And then it is. So wearing a three-way switch, I always have to look it up. Mm -hmm. yeah, like same. when I, when I wire a three-way switch, I read the instructions in the yep. back of the motherfucker. Yep. And yep. I'm glad they put it in there yep. because I have fucked up some three-way switches. Uh, but when they asked chatbot, mm -hmm. if you watch the AVE video, the chatbot gives you like three or four different answers. Mm -hmm. And two of them are technically right, but awkward as shit. Yep. Right. And one of them is, is absolutely wrong. <laughs> but what I thought was best was when he 
you did speech to text. And he said like, yeah, but what if the motherfucking black one is whatever, right? Like when he literally swore at it, it still answered his question, not acknowledging the profanity, right. but it kind of looked back at the answer it gave him and it tuned it up. Really? And so even when he got angry at it and readdressed the question like, no, well, what if it's a this? Then it did tune up the answer. Huh. Now, to me, this isn't ground shaking because for how long now have all of us had the answer to all the world's questions in our pocket? Right. And how much smarter has it made the average 14 year old? <laughs> I don't know if it's made them any smarter. It's allowed them to uh, acquire information. What but. I can tell you is we can end arguments very quickly. Yeah. Right. Which is no fun. Right. <laughs> I like to prolong right. arguments. Right. But, but, I don't really know if this has made us smarter no. as a culture. Steve and I are currently in like a 15 to 20 year argument. <laughs> it's been going on it's for quite a while. Met. It's like that fire that's burning under yeah. uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's just oh, nobody knows why it's still burning, but it's still burning. It's burning. Yeah. Are we going to try to put it out at this point? No, really. We're just going to let it they go. They made a good movie about it, I, though. They've, they, it's a feature. There have been a couple. So anyway. We didn't start the fire. That's a, that's a brilliant, brilliant but thing. You know what crashed AI, though? What okay, this AI? is what crashed AI. So yeah, yeah. She was saying, the AI was saying that. Why are you assuming it was a she? Because she said it was a she. Oh, okay. oh she All said right. it was a she. Right. Okay. It said it was a right. she. So, right. so you anyway, got consent. it said that. I said, well, it said that my creator was brilliant. <laughs> That's terrifying in and of itself. Who's uh, who? Oh. I said she said my creator was brilliant. Your creator? No, no. Her, her creator. creator. Her creator. Her creator, her creator was okay, brilliant. Yeah, right, right. And what crashed it was I said, well then, but you're a creation of that, and isn't that hubris? And aren't you? You're not. You're not even. You don't exist because you you are saying your creator said that. You're saying that your creator is great. But you didn't. You're created by that. So, so he's basically saying he is great, and that external and, then, and somebody external from you then, must say that he's then, great. Not he can't judge himself as being great. And the thing just, <laughs> the thing just went. Don't ever debate with the Sicilian when death is on the line. And, and then, Come on, man. And, <laughs> then, and, then, and, then, and then, 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 then the thing when you and when then, you and when the you thing, and then when I and then I. <laughs> In it. All right. Right. Fuck you. All right. It's hard to explain. Yeah, Easy for you to say. <laughs> okay, well, forget it then. I will not say another word. All right. 404 error. Shut up and drink your coquito. 404 error. Logic not found. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, um, have, I have a win. Well, we're not talking about wins. You don't have any win. Okay, you know what? We'll give people a palate cleanser. Let's right, give them a right, win. Yeah. John, give them a win. Uh, Wyoming just passed a law banning all electric vehicles in, in 2024. I'm sorry. Wait, what? 2035. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, wait. So, the state, the state of, Wyoming, of Wyoming is banning the sale of electric vehicles after 2035. No, I thought it was 20. Like, electric next video? Year. It, it, shouldn't that's it be the not other way around? Then that's a fail. It, wouldn't it be the other way around? <laughs> no. Uh, they're, they want to protect the oil and gas industry, which is so crucial. Wyoming wow. GOP lawmaker. Why, okay, this is as of today, so it's pretty huh. fresh. Wyoming GOP lawmaker pushes electric car ban and then says he didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> See, your, your win is a fail. There you go. Yeah, you so there we go. It's a fail. Yeah. So it's a quasi win, then it turns into a fail. So this, <laughs> to me, looks like an attention grab. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because Harley Davidson said that it will not have any more gasoline powered motorcycles by 2035. Bullshit. They already did that once. The fuck is wrong with them? <laughs> they, <laughs> trust me, I'm a shareholder. They wanted to give us a little more stress. Who believed so that? Like, no one. No one. How many right. electric vehicles will you be selling in 2024? Exactly. I, guys, man, I'm just going to be, here's, I'm going to tell you guys. I had a deposit on a Tesla Cybertruck. Oh, yeah. That's actually, that. so they're actually saying Cybertruck's supposed to launch this summer. What? And, and that they've, they've and, only been waiting till they could release 10,000 of them. Okay. And once they have the parts for 10,000. And my Ford F-150 
5.0 will be still in my driveway. Yeah, true. Because you're up 17 percent this year. Who is? Tesla. Harley. Harley. Oh. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. You know why? They got rid of lightning. I mean, are, are they got they got rid of the the the, the yeah. live wire. Live wire. Thank you, live wire. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they're 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 shareholders. I I attend the meetings virtually. America. We're. Yeah, their shareholders were fucking really, really, really super angry yeah. when they, about the live wire. When somebody says something really important in one of those meetings, you yeah. hear like eagles and stuff in the background. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have a little, they have a little button, yeah. a little okay. soundboard for that. But they, uh, but yeah. And when they said, when the people who were at the actual Twigs and Berries yeah. meeting, when they said, we are spinning live wire off into its own brand with zero association with the company. The motor company. There were people applauding. They were thrilled. And like yeah. right after that, we saw a bump in the stock instantly because shareholders saw Livewire as being contrary to the ethos and the identity of, of Harley Davidson. Right. And do you know who else finds that? Every fucking buddy, including a lot of people that own Livewires. You know, you have a Livewire. Yeah, you get a Harley Davidson. Well, it's a Livewire. I... Yes to both, right? Well, yeah, it's a live wire. Oh, so you got to Aren't Harley. they mutually exclusive? Well, this is the idea, and so this is I'm the... I'm not really trying to pull this off as a Harley. It's a live wire. It's exactly right. right. I'm not buying a gremlin bell for the bottom of it with a picture of an <laughs> eagle on it, right? I'm not buying the Harley owners group. You know, you're not joining the Harley owners group. Maybe, I'm sure, I'm sure there are live wire owners who have done that, of course. But I, I guess what I'm suggesting is... You got a Buell, not a Harley. And I'm a Buell owner, and I have been, I've been a Buell owner many, 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 many times, and I will tell you that there was no welcome mat laid out at my Harley dealer when I wanted to go in for my Buell parts. No. The parts guy, everybody, the whole chain of command was like, oh, man, it's a fucking Buell. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we don't have that 500. part. Same thing. Same thing. Made in India. Same deal. Anyway, so this is, a, this is just one of those, you know, if everyone else is going to zig, we're going to zag and pick up some news, some news minutes. Because multiple Honda, uh, Volvo, Harley Davidson, multiple companies have said we're going to be 100% pure electric by 2035. So if Hester and Jester, these two assholes in Wyoming, want to go, well, uh, take that. We're not going to let any vehicles in our state yes. that are electric vehicles after 2035. Yeah. Okay, so does that mean you're not going to let Ford, America, right. sell vehicles in your state? Electric. It's 12 years away, and electric. nobody knows what's going to happen in five years. Also, no one's going to know what's going to happen in two sure. years. I never really liked electric, but now I just, I'm, I'm against all electric vehicles at this point. There you go. Because of one word. Yeah. It's what? actually two words in yeah. one. What? Firmware. Firmware. Yeah. Well, yeah. guys, there's a reason there's a Ford F-150 powered by gasoline in my driveway <laughs> Could I have waited? I've waited three years. Could I have waited another three months to get a Cybertruck? That's why we're getting well, a why diesel. Would you, we're going to buy it and resell it for an extra 30K over fucking ass. I didn't say I gave my deposit back, Steve. Okay. No. I, I, I figured it. Okay. Much, but but just... you see that I committed yes. all the money I'm going to spend on a truck yes. to the Ford one. Sure did. Right? Well, I'm still waiting for my Lightning. And all they say is every three months, they say, you're next. Yeah. Three months later, you're next. Two yeah. years later, you're next. Two, yeah. two uh, three months after that, you're next. Did they at least lick it a little bit or anything in the back? No. They don't even like, you know, just go grease <sighs> it up. They didn't even haw on it. No, <laughs> no. There's no world. I and there's no. It's not worth it. It's bullshit. And and then, and then they come back and they only will build the hundred thousand dollar ones. They won't build the ones they promised for thirty eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And then if you ask for a thirty eight thousand dollar truck. With the eighteen thousand dollar extended range package, they say, "Oh, you can't get the extended range package without adding the fifty thousand dollar fuck you package." So fuck Ford, fuck Ford, one star. <laughs> oh hey. no, not even one star. Damn. Negative three stars. <laughs> you know they all do that, right? Yeah, I know they all. Well, fuck yeah, them all. Exactly. But <laughs> I love fuck. how I love how these Wyoming. These Wyoming, these Wyoming politicians have suddenly become such fucking green warriors. Like they are Greta Thunberg 
They are straight up there. They are the greenest motherfuckers on the planet no. because they are straight up saying, well, aren't you concerned about the environment and what's going to happen with all these lithium batteries? Right. Yeah. The, comp the state that is number one responsible for coal production. Yes. Is worried about lithium batteries. Clean, clean guess, healthy coal. Hey, guess, healthy who, coal. Guess, guess who got arrested coal was last clean. night? Guess who got arrested last night by the Germans? Oh, Greta. Greta Thunberg. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, she did. Nine. She, she was protesting. Look, they said Roust, and she said nine. And they said Roust, and she said nine. And they hit her with one of those little rubber sticks. No, they didn't hit her with a rubber no, stick. They grabbed her arm. And they took her away. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, because she's protesting, and that's what, what happens to coal, protesters. You make Coke with it. Yes, mm -hmm. you do. Yeah, so... A puddle of drool on the ground. Somebody slipped on it and hurt themselves. But it themselves. didn't say anything about... <laughs> Wyoming did not say that they were going to give back the $24 million from the federal government to improve charging infrastructure. Right. Uh, no, they didn't say anything about that. Uh, anyway, but the point is, I think you that get was money just from the federal government. You keep it for sure. Should have never went to them in the first place. You should never take money from the federal government. All right, so <laughs> never give it to them. Never oh take God. it from them. All right, guys, send me your tax returns, Steve. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, you can't have my tax returns. So, <laughs> all right. Sue me. <laughs> I'm gonna give this one. Oh shit! It's my sister. Oh, that's a most excellent motorcycle. All right. Whoa. All right. So, <laughs> fail with an asterisk. Yeah. Fail with an asterisk. Yeah. Because I, as much as I don't give a fuck about actors in general, I generally, anybody who's like, yeah, this actor's doing this really great thing. Yeah. He's an actor. He stands on a piece of tape and he says what you tell him to say. Yeah. And if he makes it, and if he does this before he says it, you know, then he's a great actor. Right. But if he breathes in a little bit first, He's a great actor. What if he goes, whoa. whoa. Anyway, <laughs> Keanu Reeves, Reeves Motorcycle Company, which is called Arch Motorcycles. And I, uh, uh, why, where's the fail? I'll tell you where the fail is. The motorcycle's beautiful, man. Don't get me it's wrong. It's a great looking It's bike. a gorgeous looking motorcycle. In fact, it's a motorcycle that I myself would ride. It has elements of the Moto Guzzi Grizzo that I love so much. Mm -hmm. It has elements of the Buell M2 Lightning that I love so much. Uh, M2 Cyclone that I love too much, rather. It has all of these things. It's got a big torquey V-twin in it. It looks like a, an and 2032 like cc's. So now let's talk about the fail. Okay, guys. I love your design. I love your design. In fact, I don't think... Arch has come up with a motorcycle yet that I've said, well, that's a fail, right? I do love their design. It's beautiful. It looks great. It, it's cool. Now, we've got to talk about chill the fuck out, man. Chill the fuck out. The motor that they are using is 124 cubic inches. It's an SNS motor that anybody sitting at this table can buy for $8,300, huh. okay? Soup to motherfucking nuts, okay? This is a motorcycle that has an $8,300 SNS motor in it. Now, when you buy that, do you get, I mean, I don't know if you- You don't get the gas tank, you don't get no, the carburetor, you don't get any of the belt, drive belt or anything what else. What about- All those things are extra. engine management, though? Is it FI or is it a carburetor? It's, a, it's a EFI, yeah, it's okay. EFI. Do you get that and like a computer? I have no idea. I would assume though, and I know this is crazy, but I would assume that SNS does not want you returning every single motor they sell. So I'm going to bet you that SNS is going to give you right. mm -hmm. the correct program to run that motor to prevent Hillbilly Jim from trying to hook it up to his uh, 96 millimeter uh, Volkswagen carburetor yeah. and <laughs> blowing the pistons out. I put a carburetor on it. Exactly. <laughs> Great. So I'm going to just go hey, out on a limb it fits and right say, on the throttle body. <laughs> like, yeah, like most engine manufacturers today. Yeah. That are going to sell you a, a motor. They probably have I was just asking, some you know? management software that goes with it, yeah. just in the interests of keeping the pistons inside and minimizing warranty claims to dipshits who don't know what they're doing. Hey. Fair enough. Okay. Now Oscar and I did a little bit of a deep dive on this just because we were curious. Um, let's talk about money. Yeah. Oscar, how much was this motorcycle? Uh, just 128k. Yeah. Just, just. And that, that, that's kind of weird because when you look at, <laughs> yeah, well, no, but I mean, when you look at Keanu Reeves, he seems like he's kind of a down to earth dude. Yes. And it seems like he's, he's down with the common man. It, he hangs out like that and everything. Yeah. yeah. So you think that like, he'd be like, you know, 
only three of my friends can afford this motorcycle. But think about it. I mean, it's a no, low. Probably it's a all low, of his friends can afford it. Right. Yeah, but it's a low production machine. The co- the overhead cost on building ten machines is astronomical compared to a building a hundred thousand machines. Probably handmade, and they're all handmade custom made, and yeah. whatever. But I just wish it had an inline four. Okay, <laughs> a <laughs> longitudinal inline four. Anybody who ever started out to make affordable art for the masses, Warhol, mm. Banksy. They all were selling that shit at a million dollars a print, right? Quick in a hurry, mm-hmm. right? So they were high too, though. Well, I mean, not that he isn't. High. I don't know. You mean like, <laughs> like chemically high? high? Yeah. High, okay, high, fair high, enough. High, I don't high, care if you're high, high as g- giraffe pussy, as John says. I don't <laughs> give a damn how high but you are. I, I but if you're rich friends, mushrooms. But if you're, like, but if your rich friends are high, yeah, then they're gonna spend a million dollars for your, okay. your stay on that shitty picture. Art, I just want to so. look at it a little bit. Right. Yeah. Well, right. Let's look at this. So this is the KR GT1. KR stands I for mean, hold Keanu on. Reeves. If you stand back a minute, it yeah. kind of looks like China, China was trying to make okay. a fucking bike. Okay. Mm. Some of the lines are not dissimilar <laughs> yeah. from some of the more recent <laughs> Keyway, like the Keyway 302. Yeah. Looks kind of like this. Yeah. The Key, Keyway 302 V20. It's got, the, it's got that perfectly placed like fucking exhaust pipe and a little bit too long swing arm. And the, yeah. Know. Yeah. The swing arm's a little too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. The wheelbase on this does look pretty long. It looks pretty rangy. Yeah. The, the, real, the wheelbase is pretty fucking rangy. That's for sure. Uh, so... Oh, and the you know the, obviously the new triumph of, of sorts is the not triumph motorcycles the is 1S. the one s so the one s is here and uh, it's it's beautiful that one's I mean, a good looking that's bike. that's yeah, the new one that's the 128k one 128k yeah. but they, they got that right carbon though, fiber yeah. and all the other shit yeah it's well let's talk bike. about how right they got it mm. okay just for fun because again it does look like an m2 cyclone with a stretch swing arm mm-hmm. except for the fact that that is the rear swing arm support that is located pretty far forward. I'll give them that, though. The exhaust yeah. pipe, it looks like they got melted and bent. I don't like, like that. Oscar loves I, that. I like it. So Oscar loves... It looks the, like a periscope. Oscar <laughs> loves the 45-degree angle and the exhaust. <laughs> and to me, I'm like, nope. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> if I'd want it, but... Fine with it. but that like, looks like it got too hot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bent carrot. Bent carrot. That's a good one. <laughs> it kind of looks like it needs to see an attractive. It kind of looks like it, it, it kind of looks like a dick that got closed in the door. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, son. It'll be crooked like that the rest of your life. Um, Peroni's right. pipe. You, yes, yeah. you better get used to fucking around corners. So okay. <laughs> oh, and it's got Comstar. Comstar. It wheels. does have Comstar <laughs> wheels on it. Yeah. Okay, but but I digress. So features and highlights. Okay, this is fun. The frame is beautiful. The frame is gorgeous. It looks like it's a massively two piece frame bolted together. That's kind of kick ass. Um, remember 104 cubic inches. Um, now remember too, that we're talking about American motorcycles, so they're not good at math. That's well over 2000 CCs. Mm-hmm. 2032. Right? Yeah. Yep. That's a lot of CCs. Um, they have a swing arm where the chain moves through the single sided swing arm, which, uh, means that from now on you will only be using clip chains. So uh, that's not, you know, some people like, some people don't like. I love the single-sided swing arm. I think it's sex, man. I think that is beautiful. I love it. Super duper cool. Wait, why can't you use a rivet chain? You can. It's just not much fun, right? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're going to be, yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. Well, I mean, it's on any bike. You rivet it on, you got to cut it off, right? Well, again, roadside, so, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, roadside, so, right, right, right. right, The chain passes through right, the swing yeah, arm, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh it does make changing the chain a little more difficult, right? So if if you are going to buy when an your endless... chain gets loose, it starts chewing up your swing. And if you're going to buy oh, yeah, an endless, yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. If you're going to buy an endless chain, you you're going to have to put an end to that chain somewhere, yeah, right, right. right? Okay. The Arch One carbon fiber fuel cell with built-in air filter box. I, it's kind of cool. That's neat. I like that. I think that's pretty nice. One piece efficiency. Um, this business right here <laughs> is my. This is a hundred thousand dollar feature, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> The gas cap does that. The gas cap lifts up on a parallel, a parallelogram. Yeah. It lifts up and out of the way. I'm convinced that's worth $100,000. No, it's not. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. It's cool. Okay. It's cool. It kind of cool. looks like the thing that Travis Pastrana and the guys are using to launch onto now. It is. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? it is? It is the only thing that's going to remind you 
every day of the one hundred and thirty thousand dollars you spent. Yeah. That um, is going to be the part that reminds you. You can forget about using a tank lock bag. You can forget about using oh. a lot of things on this bike. If you're so spending that kind of money on a bike, you don't really give a shit. Two thousand and thirty-two CCs. Yeah, you're calling a guy saying get one hundred and fifteen torques and four point five gallon gas tank capacity. But the dry weight, my friends, is porky. The dry weight is porky by Sportster standards. The dry weight is porky by any Buell ever listed standards. In fact, the dry weight is so porky that it forced Oscar and I to do a deep dive into Buells. So it turns out, not that long ago, year of our Lord 2009, you could have bought a Buell with an actual real Rotax 1125 motor that put out way the fuck over 100 horsepower and weighed 200 pounds less. Wow. 200 pounds. But it was Two, still a $140,000 motorcycle, right? Well, yeah. they're used right now yeah. for between six and eight grand. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think we did check. Originally, when it came out, it was like, 20 some 26 yeah, yeah 26, 26 was the most money you could ever and that was for the, the race bike that was the yeah, rr the RR. so yeah. the rr if you were going to buy an actual RR. real yes an actual buell rr which is truly a racetrack machine uh the real buell racetrack equipped um 2012 this isn't a 22 year old machine the height of their evolution 1190 motor Thirty nine ninety nine MSRP, right? But, but the thing is, you know, you figure there's nothing that loses its value more than old luxury. Well, mm. again, to the statement everybody at this table made, this is a bespoke motorcycle. They're only going to build as many as they have customers for. Mm. Mr. Reeves has announced. Well, this Buell 1190 RS street version of a motorcycle racing motorcycle, they only built 100 of them. Mm. So you got rare right there. Oh, right. They only built 100 of those? Yes, sir. Well, then that's a good deal right there. So, 11, 2012 EBR 1190 RS. You can buy 10 of them. You got all excited. You buy 12 of them. Okay. <laughs> but you got 12? That means you can have 10% of the amount of bikes they built. 389. For the same cost as the, one hey of guys, the other ones. Remember that the, the, the Keanu bike, yeah. the Arch, the Arch 1S was 546 pounds. Mm -hmm. dry right this buell is 389 pounds wet right That's ouch 250 pound difference. the buell was 175 hearse purse having a thousand less cc's <laughs> Yeah, that's, it's, just the numbers don't add up man that's just ah! it's, it's, but the torques are probably higher uh, uh, and again, we all know, depending on where you're riding a motorcycle, mm -hmm. torques are over here and horsepers are over here. And that's that's important. We get it. I don't think you'd ever ride this 175 horsepower motorcycle and say that it needed some torques. I'm pretty sure it's probably okay for its 360 pound wet weight. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it's probably all right. Fucking killed me that... And I'm reading this article from 2012, and people are whinging about the $40,000 price tag <laughs> of a limited edition to 100 bike, and yet people are looking at this um, Arch for $130,000, $90,000 more. Do we know what the rider aids are available for the Arch? I mean, does it have I anything like I, that? I, I, I mean, I don't Well, know. I, I can tell you. I, I mean, don't think so. I think it's pretty, it's a, like a bare bones feeling like <laughs> right <you know? laughs> now we're we getting wanna, into the marketing we department feel the a real motorcycle we don't, we don't want anything between you and the road <laughs> right yeah mm -hmm. so no, it doesn't no drive by wire no throttle by oh, wire you, what are you some fucking plebe like you want to feel the cables move and hoffert you're right the uh the buell the buell 1190 only has 97 pounds feet of torque oh, i mean i I don't know. I think we should throw it away now. No, I, yeah. I'm torque. not saying that. I'm just I saying think it's that. funny that its torque comes, its maximum torque happens at 9,400 fucking RPM. Oh, wow. No, I'm just thinking of like a, a yeah. 1940s a car that's got like a, down low, right? yeah. a 500 yeah. cubic inch engine that puts out 90 horsepower that's got like, yeah. like 700 foot pounds of torque. Or whatever. I parked and next then, to a Lincoln the other day with yeah. the new truck, and the Lincoln, two door Lincoln, 76 or whatever, was longer 
than my truck with an eight foot bed. Wow. And I told Merritt, half the horsepower. I told Merritt, I was like, that, that Lincoln's got a 462 under the hood with about 160 horsepower. Wow. You know, and uh, and got about six miles to the gallon. Yep. But it is funny when you think about stuff like this is a 10 year old motorcycle, this uh, this Buell, Buell, this, you know, EBR. So this EBR 1190 RS is a 10 year old bike and it's putting down its horsepower and it's putting down its torques at 9,400, 9,750 RPM. Do you know what I can tell you? The arch is not putting down anything at 9,700 RPM because 2000. It's putting its rods down. Yeah, it's, it's out pushing, the side of the, yeah. the cylinders. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It maybe was just, but when I stole my dad's Cadillac and took it for a joyride, <laughs> I think that just had like a 390 in it or something. Cadillac 390 in it. But it was a sedan to build. It was a boat and a half. Right. So it was great to drive around but i mean you took it on the highway and stomped it and it was like whoa oh yeah <laughs> i mean it just jumped and I mean, you blew i mean he blew the one uh no, that's water it, pump it, up it torqued at 100 and over a foot like it had a hundred you know we, we had it up to 120 mile an hour no problem Damn. i mean like i'm like i don't know and you don't have to worry about getting in an accident because you're just going to crush whatever you oh, hit. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could drive through a mountain when that thing. <laughs> yeah. So the That's biggest, all there are in Pennsylvania. The biggest Coupe de you could ever buy was 375 horsepower. That was out of the 500, the 500 cubic inch V8. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the TH400 behind it. So it's 375 horsepower stock from the factory. This yeah. a, that had a power glide. Oh, it did. Really? Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I mean, I. 472, right? What was the other? Well, there's the four, seven, there the four, the four and three quarters. So you had the four and three quarters. You had the five hundred, and then you had the four fifty four in all of its variants. You know, and then I think eventually didn't they go up to five twenty five at one point? I think maybe there was a five two five in there somewhere hiding. A, of course, it's all you know. That's like the joke between the difference between the four sixty, the Ford motors between the four sixty and the four sixty two. What's the difference? Well, the four sixty is faster. <laughs> Why? Well, they had a 427, a 426. Oh, yo, look, if you get into <laughs> no, the... A 428, a 429? My stupid truck has got a 5.0 in it. You want a 427 camera motor. And, and okay, well, yeah. Overhead cam. Yeah, yeah, overhead cam motors, yeah. But the joke, of course, my wife's like, so that's a 302? I'm like, well, no. It's not. It's a 5.0. Well, a 5.0 is a 302, except when it's not. And that's, you know, when you get into American car motors... Yeah, uh, yeah, something that we called, and from my childhood, the 351 thing created a lot of problems because we had and Windsors, Windsors and, and we had Clevelands. And you wanted a Cleveland. Well, fuck yeah, you wanted a Cleveland. You've seen the Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking syrup smugglers. Yeah, there was nothing about a Windsor that you couldn't fix by buying a Cleveland. Yeah, so anyhow. Uh, but it did, so this whole deep dive about this arch and, you know, not to pick on Keanu because Keanu is a man who's building a motorcycle company and it's his fucking vision. Mm. So if he likes the Mona Lisa and he paints the Mona Lisa, I got to stand back and go like Mona Lisa is not my thing, but I still have to say it's Mona Lisa. Is he really building a company? He's building a bike. You know what? I like that idea about like, this is the Etsy of motorcycle companies, right? It's kind of like, huh, I like all, Etsy. He basically, he's got a <laughs> shop building a bike that he really likes. Yeah. He yeah. might as well build more. I, he, I, he loves I, motorcycles. I might as well build, 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 if he loves motorcycles, I might as well I'll sell f- some to help pay for mine. That's the idea. Right. If you say, this is the motorcycle I want to build for myself, and if I b- sold four of them, I could have this one for free. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I sell, you know, or if I... You know, build mine, and then you can start selling some to help pay mm-hmm. for it, so you guys yeah. can make money. I, I right. totally agree. Yeah. And I can that's, assure that's a good you point. that each one of these bikes that his company has built, I'm sure there's one of them sitting in the company headquarters, a.k.a. And his if, office. If nobody buys them, I will, and I'll just give, well, them, give them away to my friends. I definitely, I've seen the tour on YouTube. You can go and watch. Well, we can't because they demonetize, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can go and watch the uh, him take a tour of Arch Motorcycles. Right, yeah. And he has all his bikes there. He yeah. has about 15 bikes. Well, he's got sure. His, he's got his 70, his favorite one, the one that people see him driving around all the time, is the 71 Triumph Bonnie. Right, right. You're right. Yeah. That he, yeah, I, yeah, look, I'm not. I thought it was a. I'm not wolf. saying it's a fail because a man is building his own motorcycle in America. And I'm not saying I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying the fail is the fail is one the uh, the one thirty 
the assertion that one that anybody sitting at this table wants a two thousand cc V twin when you could have a one thousand cc V twin that makes the same power, or you could get a Vulcan. Okay, well, two hundred pound slider. <laughs> yeah, right. or you could have Vulcan's a one. Got a two thousand cc. We all acknowledge yeah. mistakes were made, uh, but. But we do say that this doesn't need to be 2,000. Like, nobody at this table cares about the big dick reference of Oscar pulling up and saying, yeah, I got a 2.5 liter Triumph Rocket 3. Well, that's my, my point. I have right? a 70 what, cc. What is, do they <laughs> right. have a Super purpose? Cub. <laughs> like, do they have a purpose in mind for this bike? Because it's definitely not a long tour. It's not a touring bike. I it's believe in the video two. you're seeing the purpose. Okay, so it's just a sport bike with a V2. It's a Canyon Carver. Okay. Well, and it's, I mean, it's a Canyon Carver with an extended swing arm. Right. Uh, well, they call it sport touring. There is no touring yeah. about no, that. No, I, I know there is. No, I know there is. Well, that's what so they're wait, claiming. Like I mean, a, maybe if it's a sick ostrich. 4.2 <laughs> gallon gas tank with a 2,000 cc motor. It's getting four miles to the gallon. That's what I was going to yeah, say. Right. Like, what is yeah. your... What is, yeah, yeah. It's not touring very far. Right. <laughs> but to me, it has all of the aesthetic of a, a certain other motorcycle that I've owned. And it handles well, but not too well because it'd be twitchy and it would freak people who can really ride, who can't, who can't really ride out. True, true. And you know, that's a thing too. Like, so when I worked at the one recording studio, my boss was a multi, multi, multi millionaire mm -hmm. and he would buy the most ridiculous cars and he could not fucking drive them. Yeah. So they've got, most yeah. of the guys yeah. who could probably afford one of these fucking bikes probably can't ride them. They're going to be like jewelry for their fucking man cave. Well, it might be tuned for, for touring. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even yeah. though it's a 2000 yeah. CC, maybe it's not. It's governed to not let you. I fuck love it when you over. go to. I love it when I go to go, to Google and I Google a particular motorcycle and my bike comes up. Uh, I love that shit. I just love that when a motorcycle that I owned and I painted comes up on Google. That's fucking hilarious. Looks like a, a monster. You were like, it's not Harley enough. I'm gonna make. Well, it when I bought that Harley. bike, when I bought that bike, it came with a a, a Buell Harley Davidson helmet. Uh -huh. oh. So it came with a full face, which is the only. Full face helmet Harley Davidson had ever made up to that right. point. They didn't know they existed. But it came and it was from a company called Shark. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you remember Sharks. They're still around, right? Right. I don't know. Yeah, they're I don't a MotoGP thing. Yeah, they're so European it was a Shark helmet. And so I got the Shark helmet. And the Shark helmet was Harley and it had orange stripes up. And I was like, that's a great idea. So I painted the frame and the wheels of my M2 oh. Cyclone the same color. So I painted the motorcycle to match the helmet. But cool. do you remember a bar in Cleveland called the Garage Bar? This motorcycle was famous for leaving the garage bar with drinks on the line. Where, you know, guys on the Harleys would be like, hey, is there a fucking deal? Fucking want to be sports And I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and it, it went, it went real good. So, yeah, it never had any problem going either. It's a quick bike. God damn, they have like 75 fucking pictures of your bike. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. So, uh, yeah, so that's, I feel like his. I feel like his Buell, you remember my, this is the second Buell I had, which is the all black Buell. Um, his Buell looks a lot like my Buell, right? And yeah, there's not that much difference, yeah, man. You're right. That's $2,700, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> it's got the same kind I mean, of fucking wheels and everything. I sold that bike. But it doesn't have perimeter brakes. Right. That's uh, true. Two. So I, you know, I, I, I am gonna say back to the whole fail thing. Uh, oh, oh, oh! That swing arm is much shorter. Yes, it, it is. looks a lot better too. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, so this is my second Buell, and I feel like my second Buell looks on is more. prettier. Yeah, than the Arch. Than the Arch. Although. Now, though, the GSXR thread tail fucking thing is mm -hmm. looking a little dated well, at this point. But. And that was just a piece that I had. It didn't stay on the bike forever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it's pre pretty good. Did they sell a condom for the shock? So they it did. Seems and like it's I've had, right where like, <laughs> Well, and I had two, three different shocks for it. So okay. when I got mine, I got a works team racing shock. And I the guy I bought it from really had some really cool stuff with it. So, uh, but yeah. I uh, I definitely I feel like the M2 Cyclone is kind of a better looking bike. Uh, I want one now. Look at that thing. Yeah. It's cool well, but it's not. Um, 
it doesn't like going in the direction you point it all the time. Oh, okay. And uh, the motor and the frame are not uh, homogeneously joined. Huh. So the motor is doing its thing and the frame's doing its thing. Oh, no. And that has an effect on you um, whilst turning aggressively. Is it rubber mount? It is. Ooh. Yeah, it is. A lot of people complain that like you pull out and make a left hand turn, yeah. and just throws you on the ground. It you kind too of too much throttle and the ass and won't just spins you around. Oh, because you're yeah yeah you're, yeah you're and uh, yeah. so it did have uh, it did have some strange handling characteristics. But looking at Keanu's bike, it's um, not that much different. It's you know, not, it's not one hundred twenty five thousand dollars better. No, it's not no. one hundred twenty five thousand dollars better. No. It really isn't. Uh, yeah, anyway, so that's where I'll leave it for the fail of the, that thing. And, and if, you know what? If the bike would have come out and if the bike would have been $50,000 as a, you know, a prestige piece or whatever the fuck, I really wouldn't have been too bummed out by it. I'd be like, yeah, it's okay. It's great. It's cool. And But that there's a, this element of wanting to rub your nuts up against Keanu Reeves that some people that have extra money are going to be like, yeah, for hundred and twenty or $130,000, I get to go get a selfie with Keanu Reeves. I was going to say, does he deliver it? Boy, I tell you, man. <laughs> I got to say. Should. <laughs> Do, are you feeling that too? Are we like, going to be best friends and we get to ride together now? Yeah. yeah. Or is this one of those deals where you're a person that doesn't have a lot of friends, but it, you do have a lot of dollars? And for this, for this money, out, yeah. you can now go like, so um, Keanu... Um, so when are we going on rides? Yeah. So when when do we meet at the at the, uh, the track or whatever? You know what? You know what? You didn't read the fine print. I bet you this is just like one of those Ferraris where you have to keep it there, and then you can only oh, go yeah. to the track yeah. and ride with just leasing, Keanu. Pretty much leasing it with yeah, the yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot about those <laughs> fucking. Yeah, that was bullshit. Oh, boy, that's me. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's seriously. I can see and that happening. And you have to say it like that. Oh yeah, I know Keanu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a, in a, your special only I know how to you pronounce. Guys are Keanu. haters. <laughs> you guys are a bunch of haters. I like Keanu. Reeves. Uh, I'll I be do. seeing Keanu this weekend. Yeah. But I whoa. <laughs> Ke, Keanu, Keanu, and I, I are going. I almost to be got riding. the same thing. I got John Dick coming over every fucking weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just... Well, I, I can't help it. Your wife needs me. Hey! <laughs> That's I just, really funny. I have a feeling it's going to be like, so I bought my bike from Keanu, and he says to meet him up at Alice's restaurant. Um, we're going to meet up on Tuesdays. And, like, that's what I see happening. Yeah. And I'm not arch, saying... Arch Riders meet up. Arch Riders meeting, <laughs> oh, right? Geez. So the two yeah, I'm, only. Yeah, I'm buying this bike so I can be part of a very exclusive club, right. the Arch Riders Club. Keanu... <laughs> Fuck man. So in that regard, I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little oh, bit on the I wonder if they have a handshake. Like <laughs> <laughs> it is the Bill and Ted handshake. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, you're right. That's that's exactly what it is. <laughs> I don't hate him. He's, no, no, I don't yeah, and no, I again you I don't see the hate one movie him where he's all. like He's at home and these two chicks show up. Yeah, we watched it. That, that was the. Thing. Oh yeah, well, we were, <laughs> we were in we were in Blue Ridge the, Mountains, all bored. Yeah, and we know. find this movie called like Knock Knock or something. Yeah, okay. yeah. And we're like, knock, yeah. knock. And we're like, yeah. who's in this movie? And it's like Keanu fucking Reeves. We're like, what? I've never heard of this. Yeah. There's a reason that you've never heard of this movie. <laughs> it's a great fucking movie. Yeah. But, but Keanu right. plays basically Keanu. He's married to a hot woman who's an artist. Yeah. Right. Don't knock on the door. Two 20 year old girls are basically naked and they're like, Yeah, we need to talk to you. Our All car right. broke down. Can you help us? Yeah. And then she got weird. They, it, she like gets you weird. say, you don't pay them to stay, you pay them That's to leave. That's the trick, right? Yeah. You don't pay them to show up. So it's you a pay much, them to go home. It's a much darker experience than I had a thought, but it goes man, is it worth it. It is so worth it. Right. <laughs> on. A TNA right on. on that, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I So looking at these pictures now and just realizing that the Buell, um, the 2009, the Buell 1125R. Mm -hmm. That's another Rotax powered monster, and it's a good looking bike. Yeah. Oh yeah, radial brakes are radial brakes are still sexy. Yeah. You, I mean, why did that catch on more? What like what is the point that that, that more motorcycle places don't? Or that's a places? damn good question because because it makes sense. You're it's gonna, lighter. It's cooler. It's cooler. You're gonna have a cooler brake. Costs more money. We have mechanical Why? leverage. I mean, Why would not, it cost more? You're money? not grabbing a wheel this big. You're grabbing because if you look at the big. you look at the stampings from like a Honda, they use this one, and then the inside one is the one they use for the back. I mean, they. So you're ones. saying that yeah, you could use one brake on like 75 different bikes, 
But yeah, but you also could take the one piece of stamp. You could take one stamping and make two two you discs. Do that too. Um, they can make the rear one out of that, out of the front. Well, may, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you could, but I mean, but my. Then, but then look at the torsion on your. It's there's a lot more torsion on your caliper. No, I disagree. I com- I think it's the yeah. opposite way around. And well, it's but your moment higher. But, but you, your moment is long, bigger. Wouldn't that give you more? I disagree. I don't think so. Here. I believe that. With the radial, the idea is that outer loop is bigger. So that outer loop will be making less revolutions than a smaller inner right. loop for the same speed. Right. So the speed Your is lower. The inside. swept area is yeah. going to be larger because it's at a more out. No, I agree with that. Right. But what I'm saying yeah. is the torsion on the caliper is like you have a your moment is this long instead of this long. Yeah, but when has torsion on the caliper ever been an issue? Okay, but so yeah. so if my caliper is down here, it's yeah. going to twist the fork more than if it's up here where it's closer to being in the But slider. it's further out though. So it has more it has more torsion. I think no, I would less. think that I being think yeah, I would think that no being less. further I mean, out. Look at brakes less on a, friction, let's look at brakes on a bicycle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got the stupid little calipers yeah. and just two little rubber things Running that are grabbing rim. directly right. on the rim right. on a tw- that have a twenty six inch right. radius. Yeah. You yeah. wouldn't be able to do that if they were grabbing a ten inch. Exactly. Rim, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's that's the yeah that's, yeah yeah. Yeah, I really. Uh, I no, I I kind of get yeah, the but, Hoffer's point, but I I, I yeah. yeah. But, I've not. But it's wrong. I've not known. It might be wrong. I mean, I don't know. I'm just looking at moment. I'm looking at like, right because it's this moment. distance for. Yeah, the velocity is distance for but, I mean, so you. Know what? No, yeah. just, but, but t- talk a little bit more. What do you mean by moment? I, I'm. You have. It's like a lever. So he's saying that because your lever, your lever the is, grippy grippy is happening very far away from the axle. But then you're. But but then so, it's counter. It's offset by the fact that right. you have more surface. Like you said, more surface area, right. and it's and it's moving more slowly. Right. So I guess maybe it would have less because. If you're looking at uh, kinetic energy, I mean it's yeah. m mv squared. Yeah, that, so actually, it's the other way around. So it's, I stand corrected too because now looking at a picture of that, the outer part is going faster. That, that's actually in the wrong. They sh- if the caliper had been up closer, then it oh, would have wow. less twist. Well, so different versions have had the caliper at various yeah, different angles, uh, sure but. Well, oh, it's going faster, less. yeah, but warping right. would be less. But right. the force should be yeah. more because it's faster. Undeniably, it would. It would. Okay, now that I think about it a little yeah. bit more, it would twist your fork more. You're right. You are right. Yeah. But, but I mean, there has to be some offset of forces too because it's bigger, but you get more braking force. Or well, maybe that's you have to use... It doesn't matter where the caliper is in yep. the radius. It's, it's still, still the same. Going yeah. to put. It's the it's a. Yeah, yeah right. but you have more control if it's something. But I if think you're trying you to stop something this big, or you're stopping like this way, you have more torque. That's right, and right? I think I mean, you need you less force too. I think your pads will last longer with the bigger caliper because you have more mm. surface area going through less heat. But your torsion would be the same, maybe. Right. Mm. Because you have more torsion, but you have more. Well, and look, and it's on the inside, so the caliper is not really in a different place. Right. If it was on the outside, which it can't be, it but can't if, be. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, so like realistically, it's just. I don't know. I'm just it's t- where it mounts. And I this is a pretty and, and granted, this is a no, pretty yeah, this is a <laughs> yeah. This is a pretty early example of it, but I guess it looks cool. My suggestion is I do understand the idea and what you're talking about, the moment of activation, how much pressure there is. Now that really affects the caliper hanger, the bottom of the fork leg. The the strength right. of the bottom of the fork leg where the two M six bolts or M eight bolts go through the bottom of the fork leg to attach the caliper to the fork leg, right? Now, now that being said... If it's further away from the fork, like he said, right. that does let it give more torque to, yep. to twist mm-hmm. the fork. It does. However, the particular part of the fork we're talking about could take the weight of an M1 tank parking on it and not flex a meter or a millimeter because it happens to be a particularly strong piece of the bike and it's also... Metal doesn't like to go this way. If it was going this way torsionally side to side yeah we'd have a problem but going this way i don't think we're gonna have a problem stopping a 400 pound motorcycle with a 200 pound rider True. so i think long before either of these issues long before either parts of this metal would fail the rider would be uh, and the moon yeah right as far as that goes to the moon. yeah but I mean, what i guess I, it's the size of the fork too right because i mean you look at the like 
I mean, I've said this before, like the PC seven hundred yeah. or the uh, NC seven hundred. Oh, yeah. You expensive. go around it. You go. You go around a turn, and the forks flex Absolutely. so much that it, it makes you feel that's, unsure of the. Right. the yeah. handling that's what of I would bike. say is yes, it's not going to permanently bend. But I mean, it would bend no, the fork. F- it would but fork deflection. Yeah. And we've seen a Royal Enfield. Oh yes, we have. Going. Yeah. Boop, 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 oh, absolutely. Boop, and you're like, yeah. how the fuck? What? I mean, no, like John whole- and I were watching it, and the fork on an idle, on Oof. an idle, wow. the fork was oscillating yeah. almost a degree, maybe a degree and a half. Jeez. Wow. I mean, That's crazy. Of of literally wobble. Yeah. The tire was stationary. The fork was wobbling outside of the tire, Jeez. and we were like. And I'm riding that motherfucker at 80 miles an hour. Right. And that really gives a lot of credit to like gyroscopic effect Mm -hmm. because that, the rigidity, and we both looked at that and we were like, we need a fork brace. (laughs) And we couldn't believe that anything was allowed to leave the factory with that much fork flex. And putting that 21 inch pizza cutter on the front of that bike really amplified it. It really brought it all home. And it showed you just how fucking flexible the metallurgy, the, the type of metal that India spec'd in those forks was pretty fucking sad. It was well, pretty, well, pretty shitty. Like you got your forks like that. So yeah. you, you hard break into a turn. Yeah. So now yeah. your whole, you've loaded up your forks. Mm-hmm. The second you let up, you're yeah. going to, that's going to, it's going to, you know. Do oh, yeah. yeah. Things. Like, well, and that's why, and that's why center hub steering was invented so that when you were braking aggressively, your wheelbase didn't change. So on modern sport motorcycles that have upside down forks or right side up forks, doesn't matter. When you brake aggressively, <laughs> as long as the forks are at any angle, the wheelbase becomes shorter. Right. Right. But, so, uh, yeah. But then there's also the fact that there's going to take so much force to slow the bike down, mm-hmm. and it's pull. It's really pushing on the axle. Yeah. So it may not really make a whole big difference where how torsional that is. Yeah. It yeah. still has. It's either way. It's still going to load but, up the fork well, and bend the fork. I here's a question then. Yeah. So a really important thing, and I guess one of the big advancements in motorcycles, at least braking in the last however many years, yeah. was um, floating brake. Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. So did that have floating brake discs? So it this looks like so it's bolted in. They are bolted in. Okay. So they're bolting. They're they're bolted in, and the this. When when you're looking at this system, yeah. uh, this did not even have the jingly janglies uh, on it. Yeah. So the spa- the floating spacers, sure. um, this these were just fucking in, wow. and they were they were locked in. But you, I will tell you, rigid as fuck, and I will tell you that I never was thinking, oh, I need more brakes. It yeah, adds but, probably to the rigid, rigidity of it the does. wheel. Oh, it does, and because your rubber contact patch and your braking surface are right next to each other, they're very, very close to each other, you're not going into the hub and then back out to the braking surface. I know that sounds weird, but I swear to God, you can feel it. And these were the closest to the best telepathic brakes I've ever had. You at the rim instead of the spokes. Yeah, yeah. And I really did love the, I really loved the way that bike braked. Um, despite everyone's like, you know, it's only braking on one side. I still like dual it's leading fine. shoe drum brakes. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, sure. You like Fuck a scrub yeah, brake. <laughs> well, no, and the dual leading, those big water buffalo brakes, those big. Steve has a rock and a rope that he just throws oh, out man. and drags when he wants to stop. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Anybody else got any fails? Uh, no. I'm sitting next to one. Hey. Ooh. Oh, hey. <laughs> The, uh, <laughs> the that's the nicest thing you've said to me all week. <laughs> that's how I know he loves me. Oh, it's you acknowledged my existence. Yep. Uh, oh, he was brutal with me all week oh, at work. I have, I have. It's not a fail, but it's an interesting anecdote. Yes. So at work, we were working with a certain YouTuber, and we oh, had, we've used. I'm not going to name him, but you don't have to. It's just um, one of the power sports dudes. Sure, one that's the they're, they're all they all right? exist. Cam. No. <laughs> ah, do, you know, do you know? Do you have any idea what one of these baller YouTube dudes charges to do a video with a brand? Now, now this isn't like a mediocre YouTube. These are these guys are with five six million subscribers, except like that. What do you think? Uh, a five to seven minute participation video with said products would cost you. Jeez. Five grand. I, no I want to get Whistling Diesel to talk about my product. Well, let me give how you... Many, how many seconds? 
five to seven, like they're going to involve an episode of whatever they do okay. around one of your products. Okay. And incorporate it enough that, you know, they're not going to show it for seven minutes. Right. But the video is going to be about using your thing in something that they do. Okay, fair enough. Five fair figures. Enough. They're going to give you a spot in one of your their videos. Not Probably. an advertisement. No. They're going to your thing is going to be. It would be like. So the next time they lift up a car, they're going to use the jack that your company manufactured. Or more. Nah, this is even oh, beyond that. This really? is more like we're going to do a huge build. And I'm going to use this particular turbo, and we're going to feature it and tell how much horsepower. It okay. Made with All right. Turbo. It, 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 okay. That's pretty. That's average. a big deal. It but they should have to deal. say. They should have to say. And they paid me five thousand dollars to do this. Well, we're about well, they, to find out, aren't we? Five thousand dollars would be a very, very reasonable. <laughs> really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they want more money than that? I'm saying I'm seven saying, minutes uh, of uh, bullshit. One hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. I was going to say six one, figures, but yeah. one appearance. Plus, you give them the parts for free. Plus the parts for free. Uh, Plus, yeah. in that case, if you want to do it, then you have to fly your guys down to film it. Is it, is it like, are you saying like these shows on like uh, needs to quality test some prostitutes? Those TV shows <laughs> where like these? we mailed you, we ordered no, this from so you, and so. YouTuber, a yeah. YouTuber, yeah, a YouTuber with a channel, right on, baby. Uh, so it's not whistling diesel. But we're not doing say, it right. It's whistling diesel. It's not. It's <laughs> we're not close. Diesel, we're close. <laughs> I'm saying like that kind of we're like that level of right. like a dude. All right. Who's whistling diesel? The guy that breaks everything. Yeah, who is you'd that? hate him. He you bought like yeah, you fifty it, Hiluxes yeah. and smashed them all up and stuff, dude. I yeah, actually, yeah, right, I right. hated that at first, but now I get it. Blasphemy. It's it's, he cool. must be it's possessed funny. by it's a demon. It's funny. It's funny. There's well, no he, such thing he, as a he, rare he said Toyota. That, he said that Top Gear didn't go far enough. That's what's the whole point. I wish that one of those fell on him. <laughs> oh, but anyways, yeah, it's a lot of howdy money. doody. Is not that the same from before? I think so. I don't know, but anyway, whatever. She she gave her consent. All right, so. Here we go, guys. Clamscape. Clamscape. All right. Chris Brewer sends us a message. Hey, Chris. He's a Patreon, motherfucker. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So it does, I mean, just so you guys understand, Patreon money, we buy things with it. Okay? We take your money, it becomes our money, and then we buy stuff. Sometimes we buy food. Sometimes we pay for getting into events. Sometimes we pay for dinner at the event. We keep track of our Patreon money. And sometimes we buy little tiny motorcycles. We <laughs> buy myriad items that help us run the podcast that we can continue giving you fun and enjoyment. And by far, look, we are not telling you that we are the best motorcycle in the world. Other people have said that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not saying that. But what we are is we are fucking entertaining. I hope so. We're profane. We're vulgar. We're obese. Penis. Some of us. Right. <laughs> We're quirky, odd, and weird, and we don't just ride Harley Davidsons. Um, we try to be all over the fucking place, but I think we've got a broken sense of humor, and we're a table full of people that have wildly different backgrounds. Mm. I mean, aside from right now, we're, you know, 80% white. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Oscar. <laughs> oh, yeah. By so, the way, anyway. this is Oscar's last official being here, so we're going to be 100% white shortly. No oh, shit. No, we got to find a token I know. A yeah, minority. Yeah. Token sometime. something. Yeah, we yeah. got to find something. I can make a I call or something. I, I'll take the bullet and re-identify. You're going to re-identify as Are you going to go back to Lebanese now? <laughs> you better wear some kind of special hat to let us know. All right. <laughs> so here's a question for the podcast. Like I said, those you don't catch lines like that on other podcasts. No? No, you don't. Okay. I have an FJ09. Good for you. Okay. We like those bikes. Those are fun motorcycles. I've never seen one I didn't like. What's this guy's name? His name is Chris, Chris. Brewer. Okay, just making sure. That could be occupational. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I got to get a beer for this. Like Chris Strokes? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, I have an FJ09. Is it safe to use a screw link master link versus the standard rivet link? Chris, my friend... It is safe. Yeah. In fact, Chris, I would argue it's superior. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple of screw master links here in the shop that we I keep with me for emergencies on the side of the road. Um, in my toolbox, I know that I've got a 520, a 525, a 4... Like, I've got a selection of screw master links. Why are screw master links the best thing you can have in your toolbox? Well, because... Who here has put on a riveted chain and things didn't go exactly right? Yeah. I have. 
be happy to admit that I have, whilst having with me my awesome little fold-up pocket chain breaker tool, that is also a chain setter, rivet setter, I have screwed the pooch. Uh, I have done that. And so with a normal master link, and you put the side plate on, and you get your chain press, your little chain press tool, and you squidgy, squidgy, squidgy that thing on, then you got to crush out the... The rivets. The nubbin. Mm-hmm. The nubbins. So what do you call the ones with the like the the Jesus clip on it? That's a clip style okay. chain master link. And are those bad? They're not bad. Because that's People what I always use. Put it the right way though. You gotta put the thing which way you gotta face it. Well, away from the power. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so do you know why that no. is? In case you hit something with the chain. Yeah, it's a dirt biker thing. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. comes back. It has nothing to do with power oh, application. No, no, it's, Everyone thinks it's like because the power comes from no, this it's way. Because if you're in the if you're up to your dick if, in mud and in, the chain's pushing it's exactly through mud what it is. and it hits a rock, it is, you might not have a master. Like, it is exactly that. Yeah. And I have had people That's, that makes sense at Mid Ohio yeah. looking me straight in the face and say that the clip goes towards the power. Yeah, I know. Because of the thrust of the chain or the sprocket. And I'm like, no, no, no. it's literally. So when you're going through deep grass, yeah. it, doesn't, it, doesn't. it doesn't grab it and yoink it out, yep. which I've never had that happen. I don't know how many I've installed. Well, it must've happened to somebody for them to, to come up with that idea. Yeah. Wait, so right. the, the round part goes on the back toward the direction if, if of the chain where it's going. You, to, to, if follows the, the power. This way, follows the, yeah. If the bike is facing way, the open part should be this way. This whatever the direction, because the whatever the direction the chain, the round parts forward. Right? It doesn't yes. matter if it's top, top or bottom. That's why I always put it on. I mean, now I'm getting confused because it can it's go either way. It's the motion whatever. of the chain. So yeah, but it, it can be on the yeah. bottom, and it's still whatever the motion of the chain is. Right. It's just if like it's an on arrow. the bottom, the open end would be towards the front of the bike. If it's on the top, the open end would be towards the, the back. See, the when back, you said correct. towards the power, I think towards the engine. I have uh, a I don't think when it's on the top, when it's on the bottom, the towards way. the direction right. of the chain. Jesus. Yeah, I, Wait, have, I think Phil actually has something to say. I have a suggestion if you would like to help remember it. No, I, I no, I'm I've saying, always put it on the right way, but I mean now it's, it's, we know I mean, it's okay. He wants I don't to trust say him. something. I think he oh, fucks yeah. it up all the time. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he does. I don't. So just just remember, just remember. We are all, I know everybody at this Calm table. Calm down, Steve. Everybody gonna, at this table. <laughs> relax. Everyone at this table is a visual thinker, yeah. right? Yeah. All of us are. Yeah. Every single person at this table is a visual thinker. What yeah. I'm going to tell you, the secret mm-hmm. to remembering how to do it Righty is tidy. simply to look at the chain. <laughs> because fuck you, chains are on the left side and on the right side. I own exotic motorcycles. Right. True. Okay. Look at the chain and imagine that the chain is going through grass. Reeds, sticks, whatever you want. If the energy of your motor is pushing your chain this way, which goes from the front of the motorcycle to the back of the motorcycle on the bottom of the motorcycle, right? From the front of the motorcycle to the back of the motorcycle along the bottom of the motorcycle. So that chain is always headed, the bottom of that chain is always headed out the, the back. back of the motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, if that clip were pointed towards the back of the motorcycle <laughs> and it were to come in contact with another substance, it could very easily be visualized that that clip were to come off. That's how you think about yeah, it. Yeah, because if it hit the other way, it's just tightening it. It's just tightening it. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So that's exactly it. And it's, it's really, but all that being said, I can also assure you, that's not going to help it. So um, make sure yeah. you start doing it the right way now, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Right. Check everything right, 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 you're right. John, John, can you take a picture of all his bikes tomorrow and so we can diagnose? Diagnose his chain installation. Is, is how many, how many are bikes? wrong? Right. We'll right. have a brief inspection. You can oh, and then also, it'll be a $10 fine. You can also be that, anal re- retentive and put safety wire on it. I'd rather not do that. Okay, you can. Wow. It, I've, I've, I've seen it done. <laughs> really? Yep, but don't you absolutely. think the sprocket would eventually chew through the fucking safety wire? Nope. What? Nope. I think before that, I rivet it, I would. Those are rigid. That, if I was going to rivet it, I would just go. Are rigid. The sprocket comes nowhere near that. But the sprocket did, is way in here. What? Yeah. Way in here. It's, that's on the yeah, the oh, sprocket oh, doesn't. Oh, 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 oh. I thought it was over the, the whole fucking thing. The sprocket doesn't no. run on your outer plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The I sprocket see it now. runs on your yeah, rollers. Yeah, yeah. I see it now. So I, it looked like you were going over the whole thing. This is simply one little 
tick, one little loop of safety I suppose wire. you could put like red Loctite on it too. I've really. seen red Loctite. I've seen the zap with a welder, tap it with a welder. And I've also seen our racetrack favorite. Ooh, that's oh, yeah, that guy. I've seen that. You've seen that guy. Yeah, yeah. Safety wire to safety wire. Wow. Seen that dude. Seen that dude many times here at the shop. I think that that's required for some Arma shit and stuff like that, isn't it? Like yeah. They, yeah. 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 So just keep in mind, but this isn't what we're talking about, my friends. Chris Brewer, Chris Brewer is specifically twisty, twisty. talking about master links that involve screw on. Okay. Screw on master links. Now, why is that, you know, why, why is that so fucking weird? Why is that so different? It's actually not. And it's pretty fucking brilliant. If you have not had a motorcycle that has screw on master links, you might not known about it. Uh, because a lot of motorcycles now are coming with them. They do work remarkably well. And here's why I say they work remarkably well, because when a chain has gotten a couple of miles on it, when a chain is a little bit old and you're trying to repair the chain and you're trying to put on that outer plate, how many times have you had to request bring in the help of a needle nose vice grips to squeeze that son of a bitch on tight enough that you can get mm -hmm. the plate outer plate to go on deep enough so that you can put the rivets on right. uh, o-ring yeah. o-ring chains yep. now i've got a couple of motorcycles that have non-o-ring chains but the vast majority of them have o-ring chains or x-ring chains okay what the screw type does is it gets rid of the need for the vice grips the vice grips are now a thing of the past you put the plate on on these really nice long metal shafts that are threaded and then you take the nuts and you put the nuts on and you tighten the nuts down. And when the nuts are tightening down onto the screw type master links, then what happens is they break off. They get to the correct tension and they break and they fail. It's what? like mega log center piping. Exactly. Because then it gives you the exact right torque. It gives you the, the exact right squish. In my opinion, it gives you the exact right squish every time. Whereas I can tell you that I myself have fucked up and not done a good crush on a rivet style chain. I have put a chain on and had that same chain come off or better yet, tack, tack, tack. What the fuck's that noise? And then I look down and I see my side plates gone. And my chain is just holding on with the strength of the back plate. And I'm like, oh, I just put that chain on two, three days ago. I fucked up. I didn't squish it enough. Yeah. Or my chain tool was, I was using my secondary, my tertiary chain tool and doesn't have the good dimples on it. Or it was made in China and it doesn't have nice hardened steel on the, the deformers for the rivet. So the only thing that deforms is the tool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You buy a cheap chain tool. The one at Harbor Freight. I can tell you those Harbor Freight ones. Oh, that's a chain tool, chain tool breaker. That's the chain tool breaker, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. I've had I've had customers bike. I mean, I can tell you that they use the Harbor Freight chain tool because it does not mushroom out no. the rivets at all. It just does a bad motion job. Motion Pro, baby, gotta have the most. Honestly, pro. spend a couple of bucks, right? Yeah. But for seventeen bucks, you well, now let's make an attachment for the air hammer <laughs> that goes on. Yeah. You tighten it up, yeah. lines everything up, and then you you, you just. Yeah. Needle scaler. Yeah. Dude, you can do that with the hey. needle scaler, man. And, uh, and I am the guy who is, you look at my, if you look at my race bike, tack, tack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I know it's an O-ring chain. I'm taking my chances. Yeah, right. I'm going to put 1,200 degrees on it for just one nanosecond, yeah. you know? So that one link doesn't have O-rings. It just has like our rings. <laughs> it's got just a mushy. It's mushy. <laughs> But the point being, yeah. It's got Q so, rings as in barbecue. <laughs> screw chain, yeah. Screw chain master links, I love them. I think it's a great piece of technology that's come along in the past 10 years. I love them, and I love how it takes a job that used to have, like, a third-hand tool and an extra set of vice grips and having your somebody come out and, you know, help you out with it. And now you can just put these things on, grab the M7 socket, and just go at it, you know, and they're done. Uh, or M6. I never had problems with the clips. In fact, I prided myself on the last hundred that I did yeah. that I could put the clip on with one try. Of course. I'm not allowed to have to. Like, not allowed to try it again. It on, yeah. Must go one time. And I'm and I'm cool with that on a non O ring chain. Yeah. But a brand new O ring chain, it is very hard to get that clip lined up 
and to get it in the groove. You want to know a secret? Yeah. You can Tell use uh, um, vice grips. That's the that's the secret I've been talking about. The well, third he's hand tool. He's already to said it. Yeah, yeah. Are you even I, listening to the podcast? I didn't get the fact that a Are third you... hand tool was a fucking vice grip. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. you, I don't know about what he you said. Slang. The vice grip. You didn't hear him say the vice grip. I didn't Steve, hear him say vice I got a very special set of vice grips hey. just for that job. Hey. And hey. I got a pair of vice grips hey. that was built for that job. But you, you know what they do? My head. Hey, they smoke, take smoke some more. <laughs> no, smoking weed doesn't make you dumb. It does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but what it does is it actually does the vice grips though. It it takes all the anodizing off your chain, right. and now we know you're going to find the rusty link real fast. Right, right. Mm. How can I find the master link? It's the rusty one. Right. Trust me. So I do love it. And Chris Brewer, yeah, rock on, Good dude. Question. You get weird with yourself, and you go ahead and use those screw link master <laughs> links. You you rock that out. And if you want to use clips, you can use clips too. Race organizations I race with do allow you to get on the track with uh, master links or clip master links, you're good to go. I have no problem with that. I love it. Uh, so that is badass. Uh, strange. Uh, not that strange. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I, like, I like the other one. So Mark Skreptok. I love them. A little I love roast the beef and uh, some I, horseradish. Nothing and... wrong with that at all. <laughs> all right, Mark. I need like my, that's like a, Pack of hot That's dogs. the last thing you see before the camel kicks you in the face. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so I'm, li- I'm reading some lips right now. Right, so he says, the, P, he says, I would like Renee to fill my box. <laughs> I've been a Patreon for eight days, months. I don't even understand that. Call and I'll give you my address. And he gives us her phone number. So we're going to get right on that. Renee's going to make sure she stuffs her box and sends it off to you. Uh, he says, P.S. The Hawaii episode was interesting to say the least. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. And everybody must give their consent uh, for sure. Uh, Oh, man. Uh, So another one of our podcast listeners says, this is our our friend Chad Stephen Butler, because he's got three names. Uncle Phil, this, I understand, is where I'm supposed to send my complaints about the podcast that you encouraged, Motorcycles and Misfits. Oh, Uh, yes. yes, Yeah, that's right. (laughs) You got it. It's not exactly a complaint, though. And you can file it however you choose. It's all going in the round file. <laughs> I first heard Motorcycles and Misfits while searching for something to occupy my brain whilst at work. Admittedly, in order to love that podcast, I already had to be a loser. <laughs> but <laughs> but then I backed up and listened to their entire catalog of episodes. Oh, no. Sorry. Which, I guess, elevated me to the ultimate loser. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> now that I'm pining for more episodes than they can possibly produce, I recognize that I've again ascended and am now suffering as the supreme ultimate loser. <laughs> so now I dive back into the catalog of Cleveland Moto oh, no. to see how much further I can sink. Thanks for the push. Go to 151 and you'll sink pretty low. Yeah, pretty low. <laughs> uh, yeah. So no, 402 is right up there. I think. Yeah. We're I gotta here. say, you know what? <laughs> yes, there is. We should make a depraved playlist. Oof. The, oh, the, shit. The, best the, the, the best of the worst. Of the worst? The best yeah, the best of the worst. worst. 151 make, was could the, definitely be, the. <laughs> could that be a top 10 list? Oh no! no fuck you. All right. Uh, <laughs> no, just a playlist. Just a playlist. Just a playlist. Yeah. Just no numbers. No nothing. Oh, so you mean that it'd be easier for people that want to torpedo us or cancel us to do it all in one shot? Yeah. yeah. So basically, what you're saying is you'd like to see us get canceled. I'd like to give them okay, all the enough. firepower. There you go. Good job. You're right. You're right. right. Why should trouble. we make it any easier yeah, for the trolls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you want to, if you want to fuck with me, suffer through the. You got to do your thing, homework. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want you sitting there with a little notepad and being like in episode 306 at minute mark 11. I worry about that whenever I was a police officer. Yeah. I'm like, man, I don't know some of the things and everything. Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> they have to sit there for hours <laughs> and hours and hours. I'm like, I'm, I want to know every, I make it, I'm like, so did you listen to every single podcast? <laughs> like, I sat through every disgusting minute of this film twice. <laughs> Jeez. And that's, I mean, that's the kind of thing. It's like, no, I don't want to make it easy for somebody yeah, to right, throw me right, under a right. bus. I was saying, seeing that the wrong I'm way. Like, nobody's yeah. listening to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's going to go back and listen to all of them just to jack me up. Every <laughs> single week, Buzz Sprout sends out a notice that tells me how many downloads we got last week. Mm-hmm. That number ranges. It's fucking weird. But that number ranges between 3,000 
and 7,000. How fucking broken are our listeners that <laughs> some weekends or some weeks, 3,000 people make it to the podcast right. and other weeks, 7,000 people Jeez. make it to the podcast. Now, have you looked and seen if there's something that correlates to those weeks? Like, is it like a non-sports weekend? I don't. Oh, Jesus that's, fucking that's Christ. What, I do not do that. Effort. No way. <laughs> well, no, I'm just uh, saying because like. You know, and uh, yeah, it turns out uh, the, the day the plane ran into the rained, World Trade Center, yeah. we had a whole lot of listens. Uh, no, I don't really want to know. Well, no, but like, so like I, I, I yeah. schedule my whole fall around yeah. whenever the Browns play because when they're playing, I go shopping. Oh. So there, there's nobody there. All right. Yeah. So I see, just call I'm that saying, a happy accident. Right. But yeah. I'm saying what we could do is we yeah. could plan some like seriously devilish fucking podcast if we know there's going to be a whole shit ton of people. Mm. Did you come up with a day yet for Steve Apalooza? Uh, no, next spring. Next oh, cool. Um, I might get the water stuff done, though. So if that gets done, then yes. Okay. I'm going to mitigate all the water. That's a, that's a great idea. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, <laughs> fucking love that shit. Yeah, so anyway, uh, on and on we go. But... That's that's the name of the game. Yes, the podcast is fucking weird. All right, it's very strange. <laughs> we it's know. very weird. So Buzzsprout, um, I gotta I gotta tell people, Buzzsprout has this dopey advertising campaign going on, and it's not for boner pills, and it's not for uh, clamscape. It's Buzzsprout, which hosts us, just promoting other podcasts. Mm -hmm. It's curious. So they they put this thing up, and there's I don't think that's there's, what iHeartRadio has been doing. Well, yeah, I don't. They, they promote other podcasts. So I don't think there's own. any money behind it. I hope not. Mm. You know, I hope they're not charging me every time Dick in a Box podcast decides to put a link to Cleveland Moto on. Mm. But what it did was this time when I dropped, it said, "Would you be interested in putting a, a link or a, a 15 second thing?" In your podcast, promoting somebody else's podcast. Yeah. And you know what? I think that's actually yeah, that's share fair. the love a little bit. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, well, like, I mean, when you're doing websites, if you can link to other websites, yeah. you get more, everybody sure. gets more experience. Sure, everyone gets more experience. So, but what it, it gave me the option of three. And it oh. actually said, like, what's your listener base? And so, I, you know, males, <laughs> males 100 and up. And then it says, like, you know, like profane, Check. Christian, right, whatever. And I was like, yeah. So I listed up the things and it, give, it gave me three options. Uh oh. And so for the podcast that's going to drop, or yeah, for the podcast that's going to drop, I chose um, so-and-so and so-and-so's uh, anime review, uh, <laughs> you know, manga review. Oh, God. Oh. Because I listened to it, and I thought it was, I, I listened to just the, the, the sizzle, just the 15 <laughs> seconds, and it was hilarious. But my other option was this adult male pair of dudes talking about how you can get more Christ in your life. Ooh. And they had even had an acronym about like the, the Chris podcast and it was Christian, you know, whatever. And I was like, and you guys, I had to make a decision. Yeah, that's a did I want to have, suggestion even come up for her? did I want to have yeah. 15 seconds of like hilarious anime? You may not think the Pokemon's the best thing in the world. And I'm like, Oh, that's in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As opposed to these guys being hyper serious. And sometimes we make jokes too. Oh boy. <laughs> on a on a really like oh, this is hilarious. More funny than the anime one. But I didn't want to put it in the podcast because we have a lot of people who listen to our podcast that may not get the, the super joke about that. Right. right? Hey Phil. Yeah. How come Jesus could never take a bath? Because you could only walk on water, huh? What? Uh. So anyway, so I'm going to try this little thing. Where that, but I am going to hand curate. Ah. I'm going to pick the advertisements mm. that end up in our oh, podcast. Cool. You have to make them. They, they should be good. Well, so every time it gives me an option of three, yeah. I promise our listeners that I will pick <laughs> the appropriate, the weirdest yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So then whatever. And I might, I was thinking maybe I would let you guys know, like let you in on the joke and be like, oh, well, this week's three options were yeah. dot and dot and dot. And then we'll see which one I picked. Maybe we can reference them throughout. Matt Feather. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Anybody got anything else? No. All right. That's no. fucking it, man. No. Uh, no. No. That was episode it 404 of the no. Cleveland Moto Podcast. Oh and I recommend that you do what we always do. You ride fast and take chances. Play us out here, John. Bump,
Press the red button, Steve. Get us out of here, buddy. Oh, oh, oh.